This is the Levels Network. I am Justin Honor, joined by the Triple OG, Woodaboo Mason. OG, it's What's 2024 going on? and we're back, brother. How good? How was, uh, how was the break, mate? What did you get up to? Um, I think I'm still in that sort of like mindset, right? When the footy season's done, mm. I'm done. Mm. The, it's been a while, right? And that's what I said to you on the way in here. I was like, I can't wait for the footy season to start. Well, this has been the only time I'm like, fuck, is the footy going to come like quicker? We've still, what, we've still got like another what, eight weeks? Yeah. Something like that? Well, the, the Six last week of February, weeks? round zero in Vegas. Yeah, mm, that'll be good. Um, you know what it's felt like a little bit this time? I think because we've done the show super consistently, covered the footy across the board. Yeah. It reminded me of when we, you know, you do pre-season. You have everyone, I think it's a mandatory now, RLPA, where six you have weeks. eight weeks off, six to eight weeks or six whatever. Six weeks minimum. The last couple of weeks, it felt like that, where I was like, you know, you look forward to the break. So we've, we haven't done a show in eight weeks, right? Yeah, it's good. So shout out to some of the boys. Some of the podcasts have been grinding all the way through. I, I, don't, think, I don't think I could do that. Yeah, it's not for us. No. I like the way we've got <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, I, 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 like, I like keep this... The blueprints out, you know, uh, quality over quantity. I yeah, think. we got like Cause we're after five here. weeks though. I was like, I wouldn't mind five, feedback. Yeah, but I was like, well, what are we going to talk about, right? Yeah. I mean, the rugby league season has given us gives us a lot of content. Right, we yeah. could have come in every week, did some YouTube questions, did this and that, and talked about you know Fenor Blake sign. We'll get into that later, and yep. all the sort of little movement things that's been happening. But like, you know, got to give yourself a bit of a break too. Yeah, it's good to uh, refresh. So just to let everyone know. On this show, I've got roughly 10 YouTube questions. We'll mm. though Instagram last night. Uh, we, we posted on Instagram on the levels. So shout out to everyone that jumped on our Instagram and, and we've got some really good ones coming through. Yeah. Um, and I think the main part is we're going to break down the games, sorry, the teams. Um, we're going to review 2023 and preview, preview 2024. Um, so I just want to cover the off-season signings. So we were going to do that last year, weren't we? But it's yep. like, that would have been just content for nothing. I'd rather do it now, right? We can review, we can preview. Yeah, rather 2024, than double down. You know, yep. otherwise, because other ones, people aren't going to listen. They want to listen to it now. And also, now we know we've got more information on some players that have, like if we had covered the Warriors, for instance, last year, yeah. Kirk Capewell wasn't a part of the Warriors. Yeah. He's, he's an immediate signing. There are a couple of players... Uh, Zach Hoskins leaves the Panthers. Mm. He's now at the Raiders, so that changes the entire lineup. So rather than reviewing something and it wasn't or preview in 2024, and it wasn't going to be the case in 2024, now we just roll into it. But yeah. on your break, mate, this is, get up to anything special? Or been training, family looking, up to train? Yeah, I've trained all the time. I haven't really stopped that. Um, went up to Sawtell. Have you been up to Sawtell? No, I haven't. Where's it's Sawtell? It's sort of near Coffs Harbour, right? I think it's about 10 kilometres out. Yeah. Took the family up there. And just like relax. It was the first time, right? Like, I'm not sure. I haven't been on a family sort of holiday like, the whole time, right? Mm. Uh, COVID, all that sort of shit. And I was like, oh, well, old enough now to go. And like, just to get out of Sydney and just to sit and just do nothing for like three or four or five days. Yeah, nice. Such a good like, re like just recharge. I'm just sitting there like just up there on the beach and just like absolutely nothing to do. Oh, what a cruisy town, man. Yeah. If I, I'd advise you to go up there if you can. It was a good five, six hour drive. Stopped at Port Macquarie, stopped and saw the great Hass Sailor. Oh, yeah. Stayed for a night there. Um, uh, him and Champ both up him there? Him and Champ live together. They're yep. doing the, the great, um, they do that recycling Re stuff. They're, yep. they, they're killing it up there. Um, so I had a good, uh, just stayed there the night and then drove up to Sawtell. It was good, man. It was like, just really, like, they had no, like, I don't know what it was. I just felt relaxed. I don't know. Like, I've I seen the I don't get now. that. I don't get that in Sydney. Yeah. Because you're just constantly there, right? I'm very mindful of the stuff that I'm doing, very aware of it, very draining, right? Yeah. Very emotionally draining. You sort of, it can take, it can really take you down. I can just see like people that are involved in the NRL. It's sort of, it's very taxing on them. Yeah. I'm very aware of that. I don't want to go down that road. So life's a balance. Um, I always say that. Kai is, my partner is from Foster. And I can yeah, remember now been. seeing the signs driving up there if yeah. you drive up to Byron. You got to, I don't think I've ever stopped in there before. No. It's, it's slept on, man. Yeah. Beautiful like, lagoon and the beaches are unreal. Like People are, un, people are amazing. When and it's a massive football town, right? It's an NRL town. They love it? Yeah, but they sort of just, they sort, you know. Everyone hey, keeps themselves what's in going on, mate? beach towns. Yeah, they yeah. sort of, it was easy. Like I was walking down the main street, you see these young kids, right? They've probably been in their 20s. Because I was there on like a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday or something like that. And you see, hey, what are you doing? I was walking past the Sawtell Hotel. Because yeah. it was right where we were staying. Come coming through, through beer. I was like, no, boys, come on. Just have a good time. And Archer's at a good age now too. He's starting to run around yeah, a little bit, yeah, go down yeah. the beaches and all loves that sort it, of stuff. Loves so. it, loves it. So, like, yeah, that was really good. It, was only, it wasn't long enough. Yeah. You know, but like, it was long enough. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, yep. you know, three or four days in the one town. Different if you're driving around everywhere, you know, so... That's the that's the different... Like, even if you go, like, during the break, had a, had a went up to my mate's place in Central Coast. So, actually, we ended up... We played that golf day um, yeah, you, for Nudo's... Clint for the, Newton, yeah. For the uh, Jack Newton Jack, Classic. yeah. Highly recommend that, by the way. I played heaps of golf, was, was training. Mm. Um, it was good to sort of just have a refresh and have a proper break. It did feel like a pre-season... Um, and speaking of that, shout out to the uh, the the entire NRL and NRLW by the yeah. way. Yeah, no, no Wes, no Wes in the garments. No Wes's. <laughs> I, I hope I'm not jinxing anyone here. Yeah. Um, but you know, the entire NRL and NRLW using my dogs are 2024 mm. already. Mitch Kenny, you're a dog. I think they're, le- they're learning quickly. Yeah. I think it's just you, through that COVID bit and all that kind of stuff. Everyone was a little bit wild. The whole yeah. world, the whole world was out of sync. Yeah. Now everything's sort of back in, and um, you know, people have have suffered because of this stuff being recorded who's saying like I don't care what you do just don't record it yeah. it's very you know and, that's, and that was on some of our senior players so they've took, taken a lot of responsibility for that they've come up and said you know they've owned it right and so I think a lot of these younger kids are going we can't do that a lot of the talk within NRL clubs is like you cannot bring the club into disrepute like that you can't bring the NRL into disrepute like that because it's fucking over well you know what mates they're paid so well now. Yeah. like this is We've been professional, you'd say, probably from the start of your career, maybe yeah. the 2000s, yeah. early 2000s, but the amount of money now, that they're, they're paid well. Yeah. And with that comes expectations yeah. and it becomes a certain level of um, behaviour that they have to uphold. Yeah. And then, you know, if you're on good money, if you're on you know, some of these top tier players, which we're about to get, yeah. one mil, 1.5 mil, yeah. uh, it's, not, it's not only about playing footy anymore, it's about how you represent yourself off the field and... Shout out to the the entire like the professionalism. Remember, yeah. we're, we're talking about this in the off season. Me and you got together and we and we trained. Um, now it feels like I feel like there was a small niche of players that used to do that. Mm. I picked up some of those training um, habits off you when I was in two thousand and eleven. Rennie, the first time I met you properly away from yeah. maybe being running into each other at exactly. Sapphire, um, was we'd get together and train at Elad. Um, yeah. It was a different name. Trent Munglin's channel yeah. was to take us through Lifestyle. sessions. I remember watching you in 2011. Ren brought me there. I'd never done any training away from preseason before. And it was like the elite of the elite. Now I feel like across the board, if you're not training, if you're not putting in the work, some of these guys are training four or five yeah. days a week now in the they off-season. They don't stop. They don't stop. And They're in Bali training. And, and the guys that are at the top of the game, even yeah. though like they might have a bit of a reputation like they're wild, it's always been the wild dudes are the ones that train the hardest. Yeah, for sure. They train the hardest, man, because they've got the most head noise and they want to be great. Like, there's not one, I'm not even going to name names, mm. the players that I've played with, the best trainers mm. and the wildest dudes, yep. right? This is, they're talking to mortals and Hall of Famers here. Like, you know, like, I know what they, we all know what we do. Yeah. And we just, you just got to put that hard work in. You got to train your ass off. And now these guys, you know, they're going to Bali. They're doing all these sort of camps. Very Americanized, right? Yeah. We're going to see OBJ and all the NFL players and the NBA players getting together, feeding off each other, doing all the drills and that. camps, running back I like camps. it. Yeah, so do I, I like it. it. You know, because... At the end of the day, these guys who work the hardest, right now it's, it's, it's so fitness-based a game. With like, You've got a high skill set and you're fit as hell, you dominate the game. Yeah. You dominate the game. Look at guys, even in the middle, like the you're Cam, the top the of Cam your Murray's, the, the Payne Haas's, the Tino's, the, you know, like those guys, those dogs, man, they get after. They play 70, 80 minutes in the middle if you want them and they can constantly go at you. Yeah. You know, you've got to be fit. Yeah, a, lot you of these young, a, lot of, a lot of kids coming through the system now. Yeah. They tick all the boxes, right? All the boxes, six foot four, six foot five, 115, 20 kilos, 10, 15% body fat, skill set, blah, 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 blah. What's the one thing you're missing? You're not fit. Yeah. You know, can we put you in the middle at 50, for 15, 20 minutes? More. You've got to go more, don't more, you? More, more. Like, yeah. This is like your you first game. This is your first game. Yeah, can true. we put you okay. in? Yeah. You know, what happens if, you, if you've got 30% ball against yeah. Penrith? Yeah. You're done. Like that Sharks game. Ten right? sets, you get you get three three sets, and the seven they're just attacking, attacking. You get six to go, all that sort of shit, bro. You're probably coming off. Remember Not what? probably, you are. Um, and speaking of uh, professionalism, um, one thing I noticed I noticed about the Storm culture during my break. So yes. I went down to uh, had Money's wedding. Um, you wouldn't have seen this. You, you had a little break off social media yeah, during, I'm still during off Christmas it, yeah. and that time. Um, I'm getting back on. You're I'm getting back on. Back on. Yeah, but just, you guys will run it. I'm, I'm done with social media. Yeah, but anyway. Um, yeah, so Munster reached out to to follow the fish too, by the way, to come down and do his wedding on New Year's Eve. The fish, did the fish. <laughs> on New Year's Eve. This is one of the biggest it's DJs. He's one of the biggest DJs in the world. <laughs> and he asked him to come do his wedding. It was early on in the year, but that was a giggle. Mm. 
But one thing I took out of, um, of, uh, of going to the wedding, and it was, it was a beautiful afternoon, you can understand why the storm had been the storm when I was down there. So, How there, many storm players were at his wedding? Current or current past? Current and past, I'd say anywhere between 20 to 30. Um, me and Braith were sitting there having a beer together. Obviously, Braith manages him. Yeah. Um, you know, me and Kai were down there. It was early on, and I was just observing them. One part in particular, it sort of resonated with me while I'm watching them. And I, was, you know, think about all this storm culture over the years. So, they're not only players that Money had played with um, now in first grade, but he's got a lot of good mates from his under 20s time, 20s team. One of the boys, Joe Stimson's up at the Gold Coast, was yeah, on his line. Man. But the part I took away from it is. Ballyake was there, Billy was there, Frank Panisi was there, Jason mm. Riles was there, uh, Aaron Bellamy was there. And it's like... That's mad. That's the culture that makes them so great, in my yeah. opinion. Like, I've been to weddings before where maybe the coach has been involved, maybe a trainer's been involved, maybe, you know, so there's yeah, always yeah, an assistant yeah. coach. There might be, especially with, a, yeah. you know, players of my calibre, um, the the coaches that I resonated more with assistant coaches because you do more detailed um, video yeah. work with mm. them or, or, you know, you sort of need to be helped out. But I think it just shows the amount of love. And, and you've heard of, you've heard about it heaps. You would have heard about yeah. it over the years heaps, mate. It's, how, it's a real thing, man, that, the storm culture. Well, I, just the way those coaches also interacted with players that have played under-20s with Munster that were at different clubs. Like yeah. Jake Turpin was there. Great fella, by the way. I haven't spent much time with Jake Turpin before. No. We were sitting at, at, at the end of the table with Cheese and, and Jakey Turpin, good fella. But um, yeah, it was just it was a really uh, interesting insight. Obviously stoked to be there and be, be a part of the day, but just to observe that, I was like, it was like you a light tell, bulb moment. You can tell. It was you, like, can, well, you can see why they've been so successful. Yeah. That was a big part of the whole Storm culture. It was like involving families. Because I understand in, what, 98 when their first year, Chris Anderson was a coach. Yep. What culture do you think Chris Anderson brought down? The family club, the bulldogs, the stuff. bulldogs. You know, yeah. that's what the the, our, the bulldogs are built on as well. Family club, bringing everybody in. You know what I mean? So he bought that into Melbourne, and then Bellamy just put it on steroids. Yeah, twenty five years they've been going now, man. It's, like, them, it's the best club, and that's why I think that's a uh, for for people that sort of have either questioned, not questioned, but try to figure out, you know, what makes Melbourne so great. In my opinion. This is just yeah. It was a light bulb and moment, I, and mate. I think because they're isolated down there, they put the onus that helps. They put the onus on building that culture, yeah. having all the families every single game, everyone meeting everybody, you know, so everyone's hanging out together. Because you're down there in Melbourne, and that's it's an AFL dominated. Yeah, town. that's it. You yeah, know, that's the hands down. It always will be. Hardly any rugby you know, league in the papers <laughs> down there. Yeah, nothing. They get nothing. Yeah. So they've got to be really tight together, and they've they've nailed that. So it's, that's part of the that's part of their culture. It's funny, you like. Uh, I have a feeling that Andrew Ropes is trying to implement that over the Warriors. And I even heard Todd, Pete, Todd Payton speak about it in a, a, a depressor yeah. <laughs> after. But it was, it was more of a positive sign about um, how up in North Queensland they've got a real opportunity because just like yeah, if you're in a Sydney club, mm. uh, you've got all these different teammates that play for different teams. You can leave straight after training. He talked about his experience yeah. at the Tigers. They're at Concord. Not everyone lived in Concord, so they'd take off and go to all different yeah. places of Sydney where they'd live and then they'd hang out with their families. When you're in a, a town mm. like Melbourne or you're in Townsville or you're in New Zealand, Newcastle, you just, you just got your teammates. Newcastle, yeah. it's Newcastle, a, but a lot of, a lot of clubs are trying to get back to that because it's hard to organically grow that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? A lot of players are coming from other teams and they've got different cultures and you're trying to buy that winning culture from Melbourne. People want to go buy, buy a Melbourne player to implement that culture in a losing culture. Yeah. You're getting Penrith players to try and get that winning culture in a losing culture. Yeah. A lot of clubs are doing that now. They're trying to buy that success, key little parts, right? Yeah. And trying to get that into your culture. But you've got to organically grow it as well. You need those juniors coming through, mm. right? About five or six of them to come through and just be a real part of that part of that first grade side, not have other players come from other groups. They can they can have that leadership within the group and the culture of winning and training hard and all that sort of shit, but it needs a massive buy-in from everyone else and the juniors need to be flowing through. Mm. Like Penrith. Penrith organically started that shit 10 years ago. Yeah, they did, yeah. Have a look what they've done. Yeah. Now everyone's stealing Penrith. We used to try and steal Melbourne players. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, like Penrith and New Melbourne for sure. Yeah. Like So you're trying to get, what, what are they doing out there? Because these kids come through the system of Harold Matz, SG Ball, Jersey Flag Reserve Grade, boom. 10 or 12 players come through. They're all fucking playing for New South Wales, Australia, 
Tonga, New Zealand, representative sides, all that kind of stuff. They're such a big deal. That and we're trying... Well. They've hit gold, right? Yeah. The players that they had. Every, yeah. every Juniors, they just... They just, but they never miss in the last 10 years. They haven't missed. Like Luai and Cleary come through and Fish and Leota. They always Yoey. have the talent out there. They just didn't nurture it properly. Yeah. But, but, but this has been a, a golden era. Yeah. Right? The last 10 years, you've got to think. You're not going to get much better players in their positions. Even having Brian Toto come through. Yeah. Critter. Birdo. You get Birdo. You get Fish. You get Yoey from the country. Liam, Liam Martin. Like, fuck. They're the best. Top three players in their positions. Yeah. The and, recruitment of like Yoey and Martin from country areas. Yeah. Plus, obviously, Nath. Um, you know, being brought up around the area as well mm. helps massively. Like, yeah. what, it's a bit like the Knights when Joey was playing. Yeah. When you've got the homegrown fucking seven that's growing BD, up in the area, Bediris. geez, it helps. And then you can build other pieces around it, but you've got that core in place and they're going through a purple patch at the moment. When we get to off season signings, I've got a picture, I'll even get Luki to post it. It's the first, the team of the first, the grand final 2020? Team 21, yeah. 21. 21. And it's all the players that have been. Crossed out. It's it's quite an interesting. Um, and they're still going. Picture. They're still favourites to win. They are still favourites and deserve to be favourites this year. Uh, Mays, before we get into who's on board again this year, mm. we're on board with the Nines Premier League up in Gold Coast in a couple of weeks. A shout out to Anthony Mitchell. Shout out to Tommy Simons. Nudo yeah, from the RLPA. <laughs> They put together a team, um, and we're going to be going up there and, and getting amongst it. So I'm looking forward to it, mate. Straight day weekend, huh? Straight day long weekend, Friday and Saturday. On the Gold Coast. On the Gold Coast. Should be fun. What else could happen? I, I'll tell you what. <laughs> footy, obviously, we're going to go up. We're going to be competitive. We're going to have How a crack. How many teams are there? How many teams? I think there Mango's are, got a team? I think there are eight teams. Has Mango got a team? That's the competition. Yeah, Mango's got a team. Yeah, Tom, yeah Tom, Matty Tom, Bowen. I think Tong's playing in that. Is he playing in the, uh, I think so, because yeah. I messaged him. I said, I'm coming up for that weekend. He goes, are you in Mango's team? I said, no. no okay, one. so Tong's in that team. You, so, uh, I heard they've got the likes of uh, Antonio Winnerstein. Um, Mango will carve, bro. Yeah. He's, he's so still hard bro. to tackle, man, still. He in just, that format. Like, it's awful, man. And there's a lot of us old. Like it's, there's a lot of old dogs in there, too. There's not like hardly any young cats. Like There's no current players. Well, I hope not. I think there are, uh, there are a few teams that have, like, Vic, I, I've seen that Victor Radley's getting involved at a coaching level. He's yeah, going to be good. taking a team up him. there. No, we don't, don't want to run into Victor We don't want Rad's playing out there. <laughs> and um, Alex Glenn stacked his team as well. Normie's going to be playing for him, so that should yeah, be right. a giggle. So we'll get out there. And uh, I think the um, I think the banter and the chat's probably going to yeah. be my favourite part of it. Well, Legends of League, when we played in those nines comp about five, years, five six years ago, Matty Hill used to run it. That yep. was mad. It was awesome. It was so much fun. Get serious if you get to a final. Yeah. We won two, we won two in a row. Well, I think that's people start coming at you, man. Yeah. We won, like, I think was, we won a fair, fair bit of money because <laughs> yeah. everyone starts going, yeah. okay, we've got a chance to win this. Yeah. Let's give the ball to General. Luke Patton's still fit as hell. Yeah. Matty Utah well, still kills it. Because we've got all forwards in our team. We've got no ah, backs. General and Matt Utah would be good. You know who we got? You know, there's a late inclusion. So, Anty, so we've got a few of the names, like Sammy Thiday's in our team. Josh, yeah, but this, Josh this McGuire. This 2011. But, like, I'm, that's my point. We've got all forwards. <laughs> we don't need that. We'll get smoked. You know who we got? Late. We've got Clint Newton. We've got Newton. That's, that's saying something. We've got Shannon Walker. Remember Shannon Walker? He looked like a the young Aboriginal kid that played for uh, Titans is a speed. Oh like a, God, yeah, yeah, the burner. I think he might have played Titans or or North Queensland. Um, the outside back, yeah. He, I think he. Yeah, we need a couple, man. It was quick Telling as hell. You, we need yeah. a couple because, like, you watch, you get the ball, you're not getting out of the box. Yeah, no, there's no way because. Mate, I'm catching pass. Yeah. I, I, I'm if, not, if someone runs I'll into do, me, I'll I tackle swear him. I won't even be tackled once. <laughs> this, <laughs> this palm will be out and this flick will be on. Yeah. All right, we're we'll looking forward to it. Upper so body tackles only. If you're looking to get involved or you want to go watch and support the day, we're going to be out there. There are going to be a number of ex-NRL players. They're going to be current NRL players coaching, getting involved. Anthony Mitchell's done a great job. Go on to Nines Premier League on the Instagram. And That'd have be a fun, look. man. That'd be fun. Um, so where's it played at? It has played... It's in Corumbin. Corumbin? Corumbin. Okay. Somewhere. So you can go on. You get all the details all right. from the Instagram page, uh, the dates, We'll be putting times. some stuff up on, on... We'll chuck it on our Instagram yeah. a little bit later on. Um, but we're back for 2024, mate, mm. and being back for 2024, one thing I'm stoked about, and this is, when we started this last year, we started with our two core partnerships, our two core sponsors, the Tab and BSC are okay. both back on. The Tab is the OG betting agency in Australia, and BSC is the most respected supplement in Australia as well, so... 
When we when we started this last year, Mace, we had to do it pretty quickly to start the year. You want to crack a little BC can? Yeah, yeah go ahead and crack it. How was the it. open? Tell you what, that was a nice... Mm. How's yeah. that, Lukey? What do you rate it? Yeah. Yeah, well, it's coming through. Uh, Lukey's... Yeah, by the way, it. Lukey's back for 2024 as well. But, um, yeah, last year when we sat down and, and we talked about sponsors yep. and partnership, we want to make sure... Um, that it wasn't just a, a hit and run. No. And uh, we're stoked to have them both back on board. Um, and also, a big thank you. We're, we're back in the studios, Diamond Teeter Studios here, um, the Petuta Advocate Gang, yeah, good for having us back in there. Good people. We love being in here. And, and we, thank, we thank them for uh, inviting us back to use their studio as well. It's a massive help. But one thing you're noticing, maybe straight off the bat, no mics, no mic drops. No. Um, so who we who we're on board with now, mate? Uh, Factory Sound is it? Factory, Factory Sound. Sound. Thank you, Jason. Obviously, there's there's levels to everything, yep. and apparently this is the cream. Yeah, this, this is, is the it. cream of the crop. Cream of the crop. Um, Jace is a massive Bulldogs massive. fan. Um, he sort of gave us this equipment uh, probably the end of last yeah. year, uh, and it's taken a while to come to fruition to get it all sorted. But we want to start fresh in 2024. So if you need any uh, high end equipment. Yep. For anything podcast related, entertainment related, go on to factorysound.com. They're down in Melbourne, but shipping everywhere. So yep. that's not a drama. Thanks to Jace. Thanks to Diamond Tina. Uh, thanks to the OGs, Tab and BSC. Yep. We're ready for a big 2024. It'll be fun. Um, subscribers. How are we going with everything like that? The target last year was 20,000. Yeah, we right. got to 19.9. So Come on, people. This week, we'll jump to 20,000. If you're a subscriber now on YouTube and you haven't told your mates or you're not excited about 2024 or you're looking for a new podcast, go and tell your friends, your family. This is how we help grow. We'll get to 20K by next week. That's mm. a lock. Because we'll grow on it probably maybe 500 an episode there for the last couple of weeks. So... Yeah. Um, we got to 20, 26,000 on Instagram. I want to get to 30K by round zero in Vegas. Is that they call it, round zero? Round zero, because okay. it starts the week before the actual competition for all the other teams. Right. Gives them some wiggle room to come back. We've got a really good question about fatigue uh, from one of our uh, Instagram questions as well, which we'll get to. Um, and all the good stuff. Make sure you subscribe. Leave us a review on all the podcast platforms. We've got them all. Apple and Spotify, probably the main ones. YouTube. Um, we really, we really repl- uh, rely Big on, on YouTube. That. Yeah, massive on YouTube. We get, we, get a lot of, we get a lot of really good interaction on YouTube. Yeah. We get 150 plus comments. Yeah. All that stuff helps us build our show. So super thankful for everyone to get on board in 2024. We're ready to roll for a big 2024. But Mace, you just had a crack of it. Yeah. Firstly, well, the, one of the questions was, how does it taste? Amazing. And um, it's come in really handy for us in the break, mate, because we've been training the house down as well. I honestly don't know how they do it. There's no sugar or gluten or anything in this, but it's sweet as hell. Um, I take that every morning. I used to take that all the chaos in the morning. Oh, I took one this morning before we trained. You've doubled E-Lab. up. You've yeah. doubled up. You're going to finish yeah. off that one. <laughs> we might have to go for a session after because we got together. We trained at E-Lab. We both smashed one of them. Um, what did we do on the session at the e today? Strength session. Yep. It was a heavy, heavy upper body one. So it was like, it's just, I think they, they do the pods, right? It's like, what, I think we did four, five, seven minute pods, two exercises, AMRAP, just as hard as you can. So it was pretty good. It was a good, it was a good session, yeah. wasn't it? So for people with that at home, if you want to get into a session, whether it's conditioning, maybe it's a bit of strength work. So these cans have 160 milligrams of caffeine, clean energy boost to power you through those workouts. Mm. There's no sugar, there's no carbs. It fuels your performance, and most importantly, for some of those athletes that are coming through, it's has to tested too, by the way, Mace. Yep. Our products undergo rigorous testing to meet the highest standards for athlete safety. So, like I said, the most reputable brand and the best cans going around at the moment. These the Run Club, drinks, right? We were handing them out at the Run Club. I'll tell you what, I was running probably five minute splits. I went about a 4.30, 4.45 splits per kilometer. It's no joke. Pumping one of the cans, so. Um, shout out to BSC. These are legit. If yeah. you've ever, you know, you want to translate, if you want to remove some. If you take pre workout. If you some, take pre workout, you'd understand this is, for this sure. is on. This is on. But there are also people, maybe there's, there's tradies that go out and they smash other energy cans that are probably, Monsters you know. Monsters and all that shit. I, mm. I don't want to call out any brands in particular, but this is the go. Maybe when you're at work. So mm. um, let's get into it, mate. We had yeah. some Instagram questions last night. 
Um, this is on round zero. This is on Vegas. Will the teams going to Vegas have a mid to late form fatigue slump? This one's from Lenny Pascoe. What do you reckon? I don't think so. All that fatigue stuff is... I mean, that, that's all up to the s and Yeah. You know, like you do so much work. These guys are working so hard right now pre-season just to put all that work in. So you can get to the season and that's supposed to be the fun part. Obviously, the wins and losses take its emotional sort of toll on players. It's probably more important than anything else, right? Yeah, the, the pre-seasons are so important. They're breaking every single session down to the nitty-gritty, how much work they're doing. Everything is analytically, like, in computers and all that sort of stuff. They know exactly what Justin Horro is doing, how many how many metres, how many calories, this, this. Everything is just, like, Speed, recorded. how fast you Everything, you've gone. everything. They know exactly how hard you're working. And when they know that... What, at your capacity or maximum, they'll rest you. Taper it down. You know what I mean? Like, if you're a young bull, you don't need rest. So, because they're traveling to... This is a part of the question, I'd imagine. Because they're traveling to Vegas. Uh, what's Vegas? A 13-hour flight? 12 to 13 hours? 6, 14, 15 to 14. LA and then LA to Vegas. Yeah, to Vegas. In transit for a day. So, it's going to be it's going to be crucial. The S&Cs and the head coaches about yeah, getting that preparation They're all over right. this shit. Yeah. This is why S&Cs get paid a shitload of money. Yeah. This is why coaches get paid a shitload of money. This is why you've got all these pieces around your club. And the best clubs get through this shit easy. Do you think they'd have to load up harder during the start of pre-season to account for maybe tapering it down closer to, to travel? Yeah, it would be hard. With, just say with Brisbane, right? Yeah. You've got some players just coming back like now. Yeah. Yeah, you know, so like what, like Paddy what Carrigan, sort of, what sort of what, you know? Paddy's only young; he's reasonably young. He's captain of the club and all that kind of stuff. Like, or a senior player, yeah, co-captain. So yeah. like, does, you know, Jordan, Ricky, and all these younger kids. Like, you, it's hard to balance that. Mm-hmm. Like, when do you when do you bring him back? You got the six weeks minimum that you have to get from the RLPA, yeah, and that's from for everybody. It doesn't matter where you are, you know. So like, you I could think be, there were a number of players in a nationals. Uh, I'll give Manly example. Yeah, um, DCE. Um, Homoli and, and Colo who played for Tonga as well because remember yeah. Tonga played uh, mm. against England they come back the week before preseason just get some tread I've seen Stephen Crichton yeah. was back at Bulldogs training and he played for Samoa so a lot of those players they had a minimum of six weeks but I think a few of them come back mm. just to get a few Ks before Chrissy yeah. to help them start January it's important depends how many years you've had in the game Yeah, you know like how many how many deep runs into the playoffs that you've had like Critter's had four He's been on, in the rep scene. He's had World Cups, big runs into the World Cups, all that sort of big stuff. Big Origin so, Series. Big Origin Series. So it takes its toll. Even mm. though he's 22, 23, you, know, you want him hitting. You want him playing at the best from one, round 1 to 27. I don't give a shit how good you train in week fucking 10. Yeah. You, know, you know what I mean? Like these, and these players know where they are. And the SNCs know where they are because they have relationships like this. Great for culture and you know, professionalism. It is. You know, but it's great for these, they come back and they can get on a treadmill. They just be there and just have your presence, presence. there. Your presence is your present. Yeah. You know, so like they come back. What, I don't know what you know what they do. They just watch training. And then the next year they come in, they go flat out. This is it. They'll have about six, seven weeks of hard work. And that's what the pros need. They don't need much. No. Cleary don't need that much. Munster wouldn't need that much. They just come back because they want to come back. They yeah. never really stop. Him you know, those G- dogs don't stop, man. They just come back and they go hard. Pongers and all these sort of guys. They're pros. Yeah. They're the pros' pros. That's why they're the best in their positions. Yeah, that's why they're you know? elite. So they're elite they're, that's why they're elite. Yeah. You can rely on them. You can trust them. I can trust Ponger to go, okay, don't come back till January. Because it's about your sixth or seventh year in the game. Cop some head knocks. So they want you to rest up. Mm-hmm. Come back and be ready. Bang. I'm pretty sure he's going to do that. You know, like, I trust that kid. Yeah. You know, I'll trust in Nathan Cleary to go and have a bit of a rest. You've had a fair... Fair few runs on the board, yep. played a lot of games, big origin campaigns, World Cups, everything like that. Have a rest. Come back mid-January. Maybe, maybe, maybe he comes back today. And, and the- then you will hit the ground running that guy. Those guys do that. Like I remember being involved in being in that situation like that. And they didn't we didn't come back to like around about this time, six years in a row. Yeah. Six years. That's that so prolongs your yeah. career. Yeah. I'm telling you. Like so these, the better you are, the, the harder you train. The better you are, the harder you train, and you stay on top of that because you want that break till January. Six weeks, bang, get into a trial, ragdoll everyone, go into round one. <laughs> Fucking, that's the way it was. Yeah, because yeah, the yeah. main <laughs> objective is round one yeah. and getting to the finals. Yeah. No one gives a fuck about what you do. Like, unless you're a young kid, you earn your stripes to do that. Yeah. You're on kangaroo tools and you're, you're in the top, top fucking 1% of the game. You you get you earn your rest. Year one to five, you need to, and you're not playing rep footy. It's you important just that you, you are there. non-stop. I, I remember doing just say with Jared Mullen, right? Yeah. I remember him. I was I think out of 15, 16 years, I think I did like maybe eight full pre-seasons. He was on his twelfth. 
He was 20. He and was 28. Mullen was a gun, too. And Mullen was a gun, right? Yeah. But he was never in that rep scene. He was never up in the top bit where you can get a rest. Yeah. He was full on in the preseason. Every preseason from yeah. 2006. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's like some of those players who are gun players, yeah. but not on the rep 200, scene. 200, 250 200, games. 200, 250 gamers. Yeah. The Luke patterns and all these sort yeah. of shit. They fucking just... That is ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. And then the club will be like, all right, General, we know where you are. You know, like you're at the top part of your game. We'll trust you not to, you know, have a bit of a break. Like Manly, but he has to earn that shit. Like Manly, um, when I rocked up, uh, Matty Ballon, Jason King, uh, all these guys weren't playing uh, for Australia at the end of the year, but they only trained two to three days in the yeah. preseason leading. Kilo had retired from, yeah. Jamie Lyon had retired from uh, representative footy, but he only trained three days a week. Donnie used to just look after him. But when they come back for those sessions, bang, yeah. intensity level went to another level. Exactly. So you just, and it's good to have those guys come back in that time. You know, I remember when we used to come back, it was like myself and Andrew Ryan and, uh, and Ogre, uh, be pricey. Like, we had a fair few, like uh, Roy and like Tong and Ren and Sonny, all these sort of blokes would come back in, re- depending where we were. Like Sonny, that would come back early because he's five, five years older than Younger, him. yeah. He's younger. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, me and Ogre and Bobcat would come back similar times. You know, so I was like, you just got to work it out. And it's the relationship with your SNC and the player and the trust. That's the it. Trust. It's trust the trust thing. Can I trust you to have six weeks off and not go absolutely nuts? Mm. Maybe, and are you doing that? Maybe ones? not. <laughs> just because. You, yeah. <laughs> yeah, some. No, some you can. A couple of those names. Some, some, no, some of those, yeah. exactly. But they yeah. trust us and we come back and we would nail training and then you nail the game. Yeah. That's the main thing. All right, talking about elite players, got a question here from Anthony Dennis. What player do you think will make the biggest jump? from this year up mm. the wires. So someone who's sort of on the fringe, been playing consistently, maybe a couple of years, I want to, going to play Origin, yeah. going to potentially play Origin it's this year, question. or be in the conversation to play Origin. It's a good question. Um, or for their country. I think, hasn't played well, this, country this kid yet. probably can choose about five. Yeah. It's Siwa Wong. Yeah, I like Young it. kid from the Roosters. They've got massive wraps on him. He's he, he ticks all the boxes, the leadership, everything like that. Um, Played yeah, for Fiji? He's a... He's a and Tong already? Yeah, he's a future future representative player. You think he's an origin player? Yeah, yeah. Yep. He fits that sort of Boyd Corden sort of, that mould. He's about the same size, runs good lines, works hard in defence. He come on and so he's only going to get him. better and better. Another pre-season, another pre-season. Do you know what I mean? This will probably be his third full one. And he's going to, yeah, big, big raps on him. You big. know what? The, I'd say he's probably last three or four games. He would have been arguably... Two of the younger players in their team, him and Terrell May, were yeah. arguably the best in yeah. the pack. With the OGs, like yeah. Radley's always going to Radley. Lindsay Collins had a great year, mm. but what do we say? Iron sharpens iron. Yeah. You say that all the time. So in that back row, Tilly Tupanua, he's yes. resigned. He's back. He's probably six months, nine months removed yeah. from his ACL now. You got Nat Butcher. I rate Nat Butcher. Yeah. They just re-signed him as well. A player who I love there, Egan Butcher. Yeah. I think his potential... I reckon he's a player that a lot of other teams should be looking... I don't know how they'll keep them all. I don't know how they keep... They'll never leave all. those butcher boys but until the, thing, the back end of their careers, I reckon. I don't know how they keep them all. We'll, you know, Rooster's salary cap is a little bit different. But, um, yeah, there's... Uh, there's, there's potential there, right? Let's just say good. with Walker, with um, the young kid Walker, and then you've got, you know... Um, Kez, that's it. Kez there. They and Smith to and that out. Smith, like, that's... that. They, they sort that out, and you still got Teddy at the back there, Right? If you can get through that and then your back row, like, good luck picking the back row. Mm. Crichton's going to be on that left side. Oh, yeah, Crichton, Crichton. Crichton two years ago start left side back row for a show. Wow. Or right side. So Crichton's going to have a full preseason. And you've got Siwa Wong, Egan Butcher, the other Butcher, Nat Butcher. Like, All right, let's and, go. And fucking Victor Radley, Lindsay Collins, Spencer Lee and you, Hargraves. All fighting for... Give me, give me your and 11, mate. 12 and 13 for the Roosters right now. We're going to break down teams later on. Crichton, Wong, Radley. I like it. Yeah. I like it. I'm going Crichton, Nat Butcher, Radley. All that. All and, that. And, and I think Nat Butcher might, might get him because yeah. I think he was he, he, deserves, I, he deserves it. Yeah. He's a senior player. He's highly respected over there. He's got fucking great skills. And, you know, C.Y. Wong might have to bide his time and, and maybe play off the bench. But maybe if get C. those minutes. If C.Y. Wong's the player you expect him to be, he's got to take that job from he's Nat Butcher. Got to because Nat Butcher is rock solid. I don't think he has as big a ceiling as Siwa Wong no. or even his brother Egan, but Nat's super solid. Yeah. Fucking, he's one of those players, he's a bit like Mitch Orbison in the way, like, yeah, yeah. he'll get picked nine times, ten times out of ten because 
Robbo knows he's reliable. Yep. So C.O. Wong has to fucking take that job. Mm. So yeah. it'll and be interesting it, to see. And I'm not sure if C.O. Wong can play off the bench because Nat Butcher might be able to play off the bench a little bit better. Yeah, he can. He we'll, can we'll, play break, we'll break those games down, the Roosters down in the next coming yeah, weeks. That. But that's going to be hard to pick. That starting pack is going to be... Spencer Lenny, do you start him or do you keep coming off the bench? Did he go there for a starting spot? I dare say he would have gone there for a starting spot. Same thing, I'm going to start Lindsay and Jared and I want... If I'm Robbo, I want Spencer to take that job after five yeah, or six weeks. Yeah. Like, that would be the challenge. You've got to take it five, from the OG. He's coming off the bench now, bro. You've got to take it from the OG. Yeah. Like, this is his Ford pack. He's had your little stoush last year. Mm. Go and fucking take the job from I'd him. I'd love to watch a little wrestling and, session with those guys. Oh, it's best. <laughs> I was talking to Cheese about, like, uh, the, the, the trainings have been really intense. Yeah. Really intense. The training is so intense yeah. from fucking Jersey flag all the way up. They're crazy. He reckons, you know, like I was asking him about Jared, like got a good young pack and he goes, he still sets the tone. Yeah. He goes like, you can't buy that experience. Like guys that just set the tone yeah. for training. So um, that's a really good one. I'm going to go with a guy a bit similar. I've uh, been in, well, Tolu Kolo is my, yeah, um, like him. my player. I think, I really think that he went, to a different level next year, specifically when he played fullback. And I know he's not going to play fullback because Tommy Travojevic is back, but I think this is going to do wonders for Tommy. So when I look at this team over the last couple of years, everyone goes, if Tommy Travojevic is out, put a line through him. They performed pretty well last year without Tommy. They didn't slip up straight away and yeah. lose like three from four and make yeah. the eight. What they did, they developed a game plan and a style and they were able to play yeah, fuck without around. him. Ruben Garrick, that's why. Ruben Garrick was, that other kid was swapping there. and changing and Tolu Collar, right? So what they figured out... No, they out, put a little filler in there. KO way. Weeks. Yeah. But what they figured out... Well, what I reckon um, some of these players figure out is that they're not, they don't have to be... Not necessarily... T- Turbo's not going to be there all the time. So you've got to be able to step up. Mm. And I think now when Turbo comes back in, this team is so far more advanced than what it was two years ago. Yeah. Remember when they go on that run? It was Turbo carrying the entire team. Was now Homoli's had two full seasons starting He's back row. He's my favourite. I love that kid. Love Homoli. Uh, He's Tolu- owned that pack, man. He's oh. that dude. He's the leader now. Yeah, yeah. And he has to be he the leader. He needs to be. There's some good young sort of... I love T-Sibs. Um, Josh Ellaway's in there, but... Homoli is a difference maker. He's going to be quick play the balls. And he's been paid to become a difference mm. maker as well, which we'll get to as well. Uh, but the development of Ruben Garrick, the confidence that Gaz has now, mm. Tolu Kola, I think Sabi had a down year in 2022. He had a really good year back well, in He needs to fucking go now because yeah. he won't be in the side. Well, it's competition, right? Well, I'm, I'm taking Polo. Garrick and Kola, or they put Kola in the centres. So just like the Roosters back row we we're talking about before. Ooh, so with Kola, right? There's some breakdowns. So Turbo's a lock, fullback. I think Gaz, Ruben Garrick will go back to one wing. I think Jason Saab will be the other wing. I think Tolu Kola's a lock for one centre. And then there's going to be a competition for either Jackson Ball, uh, Parker. Brad Parker, and um, the new sign-in as well, Tommy Talao. Yeah, there's some competition yeah. now on those outside backs. Tommy oh, Talao can play wing too. And I forgot about CT as well, Christian Tuipilotto as yeah, well. Yeah. So um, maybe he pushes for a wing spot, pushes Gaz into mm. the centres. Iron sharpens iron. Yeah, Similar. That's great. Both a couple of young players that we think can be uh, go to the next level. Man. I think if Manly perform the way that I expect him to play this year, I'm excited about Luke Brooks there. Um, I think, you know... It's really important that the forward pack in particular, with Jakey leading the way, mm. we forgot about Jakey, right? Um, Lachlan Croak has come on. I think there's so many positives with Manly this year. I think they're a team. They're a good team. Yeah. If they can stay fit and Tommy's back there playing 80% of the games, then I think they're a real threat yeah, this year. And, right. and I think yeah. Tolu Kola will go from a player that's playing internationals for Tonga. I think he can... Get himself in the conversation with some of the centres, wingers, what position outside plays, back, I don't origin. Know. I don't know what position he is. He's just an outside back, which yeah. is great. Yeah, He can play all three. But like He's right side centre, he's left side centre, right wing, left wing and fullback. He's played all. It's he's played all three. And he's really good at yeah. all of them. Yeah, Probably fullback is his position, I think. I think so, yeah. I think when you so, run but 300 metres in a game. Yeah. <laughs> but when you twice. play centres and you can take it to the house and take a pick to the house, he's mm. a really good defender. The one thing I love about him... Gun is, defender. His defence is sometimes he makes some poor reads. Sometimes because, you know, like he's still young. He's still learning how to defensively read. He can make a mistake and fix the mistake all in one mm. place. So I've seen him wedge in on a back row or a, or a sweet <laughs> runner and they've missed him. 
Sabi is generally his right wing. Bought him a little bit of time because Sabi's so quick as well. And he's retreated and got back to that position and still made the tackle. He's so quick, One man. His short area have. is speed, man. Yeah. The fastest team in the comp. Easy. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. Raiders, I like it. Raiders would be pretty quick as well with if Savage plays, but yeah, they're right up there. Um, there were a whole heap of questions about uh, predicted lineups, top eight predictions. Uh, that's just one that I wanted to touch on, but we're going to review. We're going to so review all that stuff, aren't we? Next, on Thursday, this is Monday, we're filming this. On mm. Thursday, we're going to be breaking down the bottom four teams, so we'll start off with the Tigers, yeah. Bulldogs, Dragons, and there's one more. Is it Titans, maybe? Anyway, bottom the, bottom, four. the yeah. bottom four teams, and then we'll, we'll break down three teams at a time after that. Okay. Going all the way to the end. Um, all right, these are more off-season uh, player-specific questions. Uh, the Melbourne Storm and West Tigers have made it official. They've swapped Justin Ollum for Sean Bloor from the Tigers. Who do you like? Do you, this, this one's from Willie James. Do you, haven't you heard about that yet? No. Oh, okay. Um, do you like? Do you like the trade? <sighs> Bloor's the kid. What's is he the Sean back Bloor. rower? Yeah. No. She said, "Must be off Olam." Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, I, I don't think. Yeah, two years ago, he's the Dallium Centre of the Year. Yeah. In one year, he finds himself playing reserve grade, and then out. That doesn't look good. It doesn't smell good, right? I'm like the kid. You, it's there's still room to work with there. There must be, there must be something up there with with Olam. I just think he completely lost his confidence. So I think I I reckon it might be a positive for both. And this is the reason why. Be I positive for Sean Bloor. Sean Bloor, yeah. Bloor, for sure. there's a positive for him. It's the, it's, I just don't think it's a massive, ma- massive gain for, for Melbourne. I well, think he's got talent. Well, for Melbourne, I just think. Sorry, I just think um, the other one, Jazzy Ollum. Yeah, I just think he's. Can, I think he'd be. If I was him, I thought his mindset would have been, I need to get back to where I am, where I am, where I was. Like you know what I mean? I could be one of the best centers in the game. I'd want that if I was Melbourne. Get back to where you are. I'll give you, you know, we'll give you the starting spot and just nail it. Because we don't really have anyone else. Yeah, I think the thing that they really struggled with last year is he just lost heaps of confidence. And I don't know, really, you know, can't pinpoint the exact time, but Marion Seve and Young Tonham appeared yeah, at the start of November. Sorry. The <laughs> hit. <laughs> Ola Kuwatu yeah. ended it. Yeah. So I think he'll, he'll leave uh, the Melbourne Storm. So this is why I like it for a positive for both. Sean Bloor leaves a pretty good forward pack at the West Tigers. Mm. Like, you, you think about the plays that are in front of him where he's playing edge or he's playing middle. He's behind Isaiah Papali, John Bateman, um, David Klammer, Stefano Utukamanu. Um, I really like that Fanua Pole that's coming through yeah, as well. Okay. There's a young kid, Matamua, there as well. Yeah. So there's, there's some nice pieces in the yeah. forward pack. I think Melbourne are really looking for that piece in the middle to just give them a little bit of X factor. And you've seen what Melbourne have done with sort of journeymen or young players before. And with Jazzy Olam, I think he goes to Tigers with a different mindset. He leaves a Melbourne Storm team that's stacked, that ex- mm. is expected to win, right? Okay. Their expectations are top four every year. They finish top four, they play finals footy. And two years ago, he was a top three centre. So now he leaves the outside backs. You've got Warbrick, you've got Xavier Coates, you've got Meany, Pappenhausen, Suofalongo, all these outside backs. They're pretty stacked out there on the outside backs. Young Remus Tottenham, Smith. Remus Smith. Marius, Marius Seve back, has, yeah. had, had finished knocked, year, knocked him out of the job. Yeah. Now he goes down to the Tigers. He looks around in there. The outside backs, he's the guy. Yeah. So he comes down with experience. He's played for his country. He's won competitions. Benji wants him there. He can fucking play. So he can play. Mm. He, just needs, he just needs to get that confidence back. Yeah. So I think it's a win-win for both. Yeah. I, 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 I like I always wouldn't both. want to leave if I was... Um, you know, of course. Justin. Of course, yeah. So I don't know. So, I don't know. It's just a weird one. Centre for a back rower. Mm. Like, who's the back rower for Melbourne? So, was, so you've got um, not not Nanaya, Alicia Katoa. Yeah, Alicia Katoa, and because they were missing something last year. Like, well, they're, I think they're he'll play leg speed. For him. They're missing leg speed in the middle. I think Blue will play middle for him. What's I'm saying? Like he's got good leg speed. They yeah. just miss leg speed. Big big Nas is big. You know, Walsh is big. They don't have that fucking real yeah. quick leg speed to get over the no. middle quick play even the ball Tui, sort of just straight up and down yeah like body. they're very big bodied and you know like he, the little guys like the Fisher Harris's and, and the Leotas that's sort of the body type Spencer now Spencer Lignes Spencer's and that Sean Bloor yeah he could be their guy that's what I'm thinking like, looking for some X-Facts over the, the bench yeah I think so Starting as well big Nas they got um, I don't know no, I was going to say know. Max King so they had um, Trent Learo left yeah. Katoa right uh, Josh King in the middle serviceable mm. 
but they didn't really have an X factor, so they'll move. Josh King could play front row. He's that big. Yeah, for sure. He could be that. They were moving Nas back to the bench in big games to bring that punch or, off the or bench. Or putting him at, a, at starting him at right four. That's what yeah, they were doing for Nas. Yeah, yeah, Nas was starting in the back row. That's when Katoa was bigger suspended. Minutes, for yeah, a bit. but yeah. like that's that was a that was a plan for him. Yeah, they just need something solid in the middle. Yeah. I'm not sure Bloor's the answer. I think he's a I think he's a good young kid, but like. Melbourne, you know, Belly's not dumb. Yeah, I think they'll develop him. I think, yeah. I think he'll be. I reckon it's a win-win for both. I'm, I'm, he had an injury. He had a fair few injuries last year, didn't he? He didn't really play that many. Didn't start many games, so we didn't see that much of him. I think he also got dropped a couple of times as well, mm. like Because the year before is when he hit the scene, and everyone had pretty big raps on him. Yeah, him I've and, seen him do some good things. Him and Polo, I thought they were excited about both of them for yeah. a while. So yeah, it's interesting to it's see. Sort of that. digressed a little bit. I I, Melbourne, if any, if Melbourne will help him yeah. like that. I just think. I just look at the other side with Jazzy. I'm like, he's going here. Yeah. The other kid gets um, gets the luxury of playing under Bellamy and that great system and the culture. It's a good op- it's a good opportunity for uh, Jazzy to get confidence back though. Right? Yeah. Yep. All right. Um, more big news uh, this week. This one's from Paddy Ryan. Kevy has come out and he said he's going to give Selwyn Cobbo first crack at centres. Do you like it? Yeah. He can just play anywhere. He's just a player, right? Mm. I think it's just like a like a GI sort of. GI can play fullback, wing, and centre. Yep. That's what. That's what he's, he's and hit. six. Yeah, he's hit with that sort of cloth. You know, he's got so much talent. Um, I don't think you can just put him anywhere. Yeah, I think this is a, a left side centre too, right? He, yeah, he'll, left side, because left he, arm carry. He'll, he's taken Herbie's spot, mm. so Herbie goes to the Dolphins. He's got that left. I think this is more just trying to balance the the young talent and the egos that they've got their team. So they've got good wingers, but they don't have really good centers. Well, so Coates will come back on the wing. Coates, you think Coates will and be Jesse the Jesse Arthurs. Jesse Arthurs is a lock. Yeah, he was on coach just comes back. It's easy. There's just for one year, maybe just like build some younger kids up there, throw some younger kids. Wingers are everywhere. Yeah. There's everywhere. a young kid, a yeah, young kid called Dean Mariner that played a fair bit he, last year. He could play. I thought he was going to be the left wing spot, but I think what Kevy's doing is you got a guy like Selwyn Cobbo, and I've said this for a while now. We've, I think we've both said mm. this that Ezra Mam's been well, seems to be like he's going to get upped. Walsh is going to have to get done soon. Um, Payne and Paddy already been done. I reckon that Selwyn might be the odd man out. So what you got to do is you got to be able to give him something. Like mm. Tony's on big money as well, and maybe just moving him from the wing gets him a little bit more involved and gets him a little bit more focused in because and you know what it's ones, like, man. He's getting like three outed now. Yeah. Kick, yeah, and he's not really getting the ball that much because you're kicking it that way. Because I don't want him on a play too. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like he comes in and he's knocking people out. Yeah, that's a good. Point. He's got to, you know, he's, he's he's that dude. So like if Corey right comes back onto that wing, so Jesse Arthur's was left. They might move Jesse to the right. Yeah, because Coates has Coach been is predominantly down. left wing, wing his whole yeah. career. Yeah. So it'll be Cobbo and Oates on the left edge. Yeah. That's a dangerous, dangerous left man. combination coming out of yardage. Because yeah. because that was one of Herbie's strengths. His yardage carries were so yeah. good. Yeah, it would be interesting. But yeah. he can play anywhere, man. He's just a player. Yeah. And he's young. He's, what, 21 maybe? 21, 22, yeah. so yeah. It's not, a, it's not like he's 28 and he's his 10th year and he want to play centre. No, oh, man. He just plays. Put him anywhere. Some more centres news. Uh, Desi has come out. This one's from Jake Cavarello. They're going to move Brimo to the centres to account for Justin Campbell playing fullback. Do you like the move? What do you do? I reckon they stuffed that up with that deal. They should have let one of them go. You think? Because they're both fullbacks. Yeah. And, you know, like Jaden Campbell can't play in the front line because he can't tackle. He's not a strong defender. He can tackle, but he's not a strong defender. He's still fit out. Him. You're going to get at him. You're going to get at him because he's a little body, but he's so good with the ball. I want him to play fullback. Mm. Well, you just can't have him in the side. Because Brimo's, Brimo's that dog, mate. He goes at it. Yeah. Like, he'll go after it. Brimo will play good in the centres, but I don't think you'll, you'll get the best out of him as a centre. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, he's going he's gonna to do a job for you. Better than average, but it's just like you're just not going to get those wide open fields where he just loves attacking. You're going to be on one little section on the left side of the field or the right side and over those numbers and getting play twos and play threes. Really, really, I don't know. It's just going to really fuck his game up because I think he just plays ad lib football and he steps wherever he wants mm. and goes wherever he wants. He can travel wherever. Now you're stuck on this one side. So what? So were your I would let one of them go would you? a year or two ago. Yeah, and what? And but try I just, yeah, I just, I just would have would have sat him down and said, "Look, I know you're a fullback. You're a fullback. Can you play six? No, I don't want to play six. You play centres. Nah, no, can't play wing. This, that, like this, because their body types aren't a bit different, right? Yeah, he's not your Very stereotypical different. winger. 
I mean, um, fullback Brimo. He's a little nugget. He just goes at it. So explain to people exactly, you know, when people talk about defence, they don't um, normally associate defending with fullbacks. Why is, why is it important near the line, though, for, for a guy like Jason For a fullback, yeah. yeah. Because, like, just say they play this little sleeper, right? So just say near the line, you see fullbacks tuck in a little bit at yeah. eight. And a lot of players and a lot of teams are, are getting that, right? The combinations with the front rollers and the nines, they're exploiting the fullbacks, right? Because Playing the fullbacks through. just go off the line and go straight behind. He does it as well. So, like, you want to get them on the line. So you see Jaden Campbell, you see guys like Hargraves, and like, they go straight at him. They... Used they, to be, they used to do it to Walshie two years yeah, ago the Warriors. Yeah. He improved out of sight yes. for the Broncos. So, like, Brimo, you can't... Brimo's a good defender. Yeah, he He's strong. Yeah. But Jaden Campbell still hasn't got that man strength do you think yet. He, do you think he, he can, can get it. it? He can yeah. get it. Yeah. But you've got to put your body in front. And when I, big guys come at you, you're going to get these guys, man. Front rows exploit little things all the time. We just want to spot that sort of player up. And we know near the line, just say your left side of the post, your fullback has to be at eight. You've got to find a weakness. Yeah, you've got to find a weakness. And your nine, the combinations with your nine, you've got that lead runner. That's usually the guy. And you've got someone out the back. If Jaden Campbell, back, yeah, like short. Brandon Smith loves that little even, short play. Even the back row is on the edges. But even Hooker's going for like a Brandon Smith player. Yeah. He'll use that decoy to get at you. Yep. You know, so like it's you can exploit a fullback who isn't strong and it's not smart and just thinks you're going to go at the back and you can get on the on you know like yeah. if you hedge if you go too early and don't commit yeah and this is this I reckon he's got to watch a lot of film on what Walshie because what yeah. Walshie used to try to do was try to fix everyone's problems at the Warriors. I think they had so many issues at the Warriors yeah. that he was trying to quickly chase and get to an edge. You yeah. see, sometimes he'd be doing those sweeps and tackles. And it, but you've got to fix A first and make sure that's set and then get on your bike yeah. and then go. And you just gotta have good you've got to have good middles. Yeah. Your middles are so important. So he's got Tino up there, he's got Fodder Waker up there that's played at the highest level. You know what I mean? So it'll help a little bit. But if you have middles that are coming off the bench and they don't know what they're doing, they're too wide at A and you're very exposed, yeah. you don't want to be too far exposed, right? It's not the normal gaps between A and B between when it's A and then the fullback, right? They call it a soft A. A soft, soft A, but they're sort of nearly there. coming out sometimes and you're, you're right there. Even like 20 metres out, they're still in the line. Because mm. it's, it's an, like a, they want that effect like you've got so many numbers in and you, so you'll go wide. Go the other way. But you, because people just look at numbers, people count numbers, they don't count. Fuck Jaden Campbell's in the line. Walsh is in the line. I think the fullbacks is a, a heavy indicator for, for attack now. They try yeah. to hide. It used to be, where's the fullback? We go away for it. Now I reckon teams attack it. They go you got to. Or they chip over the top. Yeah, because you've got big middles like Payne Haas and Tino with footwork and uh, Leota and Fish. They'll fucking see. And they got the, the best combinations with your nine is when they see that. Yep. And the nines can see it. That's why it's great playing with nines like you know, Cameron Smith and Beds in it. They'll see you start up flat, boom, early, boom, fucking straight in his chest. Yeah. Don't worry about it, going out the back. Get it, jam it, one into him and then he's at marker. Quick play the ball. And he's at marker. And then who's there? Yeah. You know, so you've got to identify that all the time as a middle. You're like, fuck, 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 Walsh, Walsh, or whatever, whoever's fullback, Campbell's there. They're not trying and they're not trying to make a fucking massive hit, like run at Mitch Kenny or someone like that. Mm. <laughs> like, and they're just to try and maintain, and it puts pressure on the marker. Then B might have to come in. And then you fucking, then he's on his bike and you don't know. Well, then, yeah, so it's it's a fucking hard position, man. It's a tough one. Desi's in a tough position. They've got so much talent up there. It's, it's, I would have moved Brimo to, to six to just get him a little bit more involved. And then. But then I'll, you just want to run the ball. He's exactly runner, right. It's but like, Jaden Campbell's a bit of a runner as well. So then it becomes very heavily reliant on Kieran Foran or Tom Weaver or um, Tanner Boyd, whoever ends up playing seven to. Be so hands on. Would you put Fozzie at seven? Yeah, I would. Yeah, yeah, I would too. That would be my ideal lineup because I like their outside backs as well. I like um, uh, Jojo Fafida. Yeah, they've got um, everything set. Everything's ready for yeah. a big run this year. Yeah, on if paper, they get that right, if they get the Campbell and the Brimson position wise, that's what Desi's getting paid a million bucks for. Yeah, you know, get it right. Get it right. Um, this one's from Carmine Barone. I had a heap of questions about this. It's been very topical at the moment. The thoughts on the Ronald Volkman situation. Was he done dirty? So the Dragons... Give some context. So the Dragons are reportedly... Well, they, the Dragons cut Ronald Volkman from the squad after a routine medical exam revealed yeah. he needs season-ending uh, shoulder surgery. Volkman had a one-year deal with the Dragons. Uh, it was announced over a week ago. However... His contract hadn't officially been registered yet for the NRL. So he started training with the Dragons. Um, 
removed himself from the Warriors, which he had a two-year deal. They do, the Dragons do uh, a medical on him after he'd been released from the Warriors and the Dragons have... For Rico. The dra- for he's Rico. out for the season, so the Dragons haven't registered the contract. They've oh. not taken him. So now he's walked away from a two-year deal and he doesn't have a deal with the Dragons. How due is, diligence is this? How has this happened? This should never happen. Someone's responsible. So he needs to get his, like, he, he left the Warriors, right? Yeah. I get it. He needs a reconstruction. Yeah. Like, that's just part of the game. Of Injuries course. are part of the game. But his manager or the club is who's, responsible for who's this. Who's most at fault with this? The Warriors, the Dragons, or his manager? All, all three. Yeah. They should, that should be set before he even gets onto he a shouldn't fucking rip training. Up, he shouldn't rip up his contract from the Warriors. Unless it's a fucking contract that, signed at St. George. Until it's clear And you're released in the end. Like, that's all I the agree. due diligence that should happen. Now they go, oh, he needs a Rico, I'm not going to pay him. That's fucking bullshit from St. George if they do that. Well, Warriors don't give a fuck, right? They're like, you want a release? We'll give you a release. We'll grant you a release. Now it's on you, St. George, and your manager. That's it. If, if, you, if you were to just say, we all, I, I'm with you. I believe all three are... I can't believe the manager is... I don't know who his manager is, but I can't believe the manager's got to this point as well where this wasn't sorted. Who do you think's most to blame out of the three? The manager. I reckon it's not to blame, but I reckon the most at fault's the Warriors. If he had, if they knew about his injury history, is it like because he hasn't injured this shoulder yeah. when he's gone to the Dragons? For them to obviously move him on, because you remember when they signed and there was high expectations. Shawnee Johnson looked like he was going to retire. Mm. They hadn't got this Luke Metcalf player who, who went on and had a really big season. Tamari Martin hadn't been signed, and now Chanel T- Harris Davidas. Um, now playing there. Yeah. So this is, I'm about to get to, oh yeah, okay, that's who manages him. Um, Who's that? Don't Tarsat? worry about that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, hell, got, I'm about, I'm about to bring up an example with Adam Fenor Blake, Michael Shamus had a really good yeah. point with it. I'll revert back to this a little bit later on. Mm. So, if you, if you listen to the Adam Fenor Blake situation, there's no way that he should be now out of contract and, and not being paid from a club. Realistically, it should be getting paid from the Warriors because he still should be contracted to the Warriors yeah, if yeah. the contract hasn't been registered to the Dragons. How they got so out they, of... They, sorry, therefore he's still registered with the Warriors. No, he's, yeah, he's not. They, they ripped the contracts done. Oh, so he, he, he got a release to be able to move over there, start training with... Um, the Dragons in good faith getting this done. They do a medical. He, they find out he needs surgery. And he's, he doesn't have a contract anymore. It's fuck. It's so bad. So I, the RLPA need to step in, man. I think they are. I think Nudo's getting involved in it. Um, we'll see what happens over the next couple of weeks. But hopefully... This can't can, happen. He can't be out of coin or anything like that. I can understand the Dragons not wanting to have a player that's on a one-year deal. He's not going to play the year, pay him for no yeah, reason. Yeah. But... Again, it just doesn't like the Dragons need some help in that position. So, do you take a hit, sign him for the year that you're expected to have him, mm. rehab him, get him in the system because they don't have any options? Water. Like Ben Hunt still wants to leave. Cole Flanagan's come there. He doesn't like he's Flanagan's more of a journeyman. I know it's yeah. Shane's son, but at least you get a year in the system so you can get to familiar with the players and then yeah. you look to re-sign him for the following. They year. should do the right thing, Sir George. It's a tough one. It's a, I mean, I, I think I'll, I'll, I'll answer that again. I think it is the Warriors. The Warriors mm. and the manager. That mm. should have been all sorted for sure. by the time he even got to got the training. It's bullshit. Um, a couple of easy ones. or oh, not easy ones. A couple of different ones. Off footy topic. Mace, uh, the Packers are playing the Cowboys right <laughs> now. I haven't checked the score. Yeah, I was about to check it for you. It's 9 o'clock in the morning here on a Monday. Mm. Who's your pick for the Super Bowl? Baltimore Ravens. Ooh. I like him, man. I like him. Got my, uh, Andrews is coming back maybe in the next couple of weeks. He's off yeah, IR. He's been designated to return. But that likely has been good. Yeah, he's been nice. yeah, I got him in uh, fantasy OBJ, too. OBJ, Flowers, Lamar. They're good, man. Their defense is unreal. Roquan Smith, the back, the, the linebackers. Yep. I like him. All right. I've got the Ravens in the Super Bowl, but I've got the Niners beating them. I've got the uh, yeah, 49ers be nice. have been there about so, for so long. I think the team's stacked. Um, Ravens got it over him probably about three or four weeks ago, but I don't think Purdy. Forty for that game. Four Forty-nine, picks, four picks. The 49ers pretty much dominated every part of the game, like yardage, all this sort of stuff. But when it, when, it, when it comes down to it, Baltimore got the turnovers. When it feels it like everything is like like Lamar Jackson is the full package now. Yeah. Now he can he just drops back and everyone's just like, oh, he's going to run. No, he just put it straight on someone's chest. 
They've, it's um, fucking dangerous, man. Imagine trying to deal with that as a defensive coordinator. Yeah, it'd be so hard. hard. It'd be so hard. I think, uh, for me, the Ravens and 49ers are similar to the Broncos and Panthers. I think they're clearly the two best teams left. Yeah. And uh, I think the playoffs is just going to be... I hope little, that happens, but I hope it them. happens. Yeah. Something that most likely probably won't happen. Someone will fall over. You think so? Someone's going to fall over. All right. I okay. just I just hope one of those teams get there. Whoever gets there is going to win. Okay, I got the 49ers beating the Ravens. You got the Ravens. Yes. Um, all right, let's get into the signing news, mate. Yeah. Uh, I've got a picture here for the Penrith Panthers. I'll get Lukey to chuck this in for a little clip. So from the 2021 winning side, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. So the 21 man mm. squad for the grand final. They won the grand final in 2021. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 are gone. 12 are gone. And that's including Jerome Luai, who's made his move okay. official for mm. $6 million. Uh, he goes to the Tigers in 2025 him. for 6 mil over five years. Mm. Do you like the deal for Luai? I love it. Who are the winners and losers? Love it. He by the way, his money, man. By the way, last minute. The table, the uh, offer that the uh, Panthers offered was a two-year deal for eight fifty per year. They upped that for one more year. They got to two point five over three, and it yeah. still wasn't he, enough. Yeah, well, he'd be, he he would have probably thought that's disrespectful. You offer me a two-year deal, right? I need a four or five-year deal to lock it in and create this generational money. So when you when you're taking less money, you still want the years on top. Yeah, Is that you right? want the years. So he's a five-year deal there, six mil. That can change his whole. Family's life, man. Yep. Generational money if he, if he Invest does it all properly. good. Invests right and yep. has the right people around him, which I think he does. Um, there's nothing more he can do for Penrith. If he wins, if they win again this year, come on, man. Four in a row and then you leave. Imagine going, imagine leave, having four in a row and then going to the Tigers. Like, you you just expect to be in a grand final. So that'd be five grand finals in a row, right? That's pretty much for your whole career. Well, you'd be favoured to go to five grand finals if you... If yeah, you, you know what I mean? Like they're they're, they're, they're going to get to easy a prelim this year. Maybe a grand final will probably win it. Like, look at their, look at their roster. Look at, the, look at the culture that they've built out there. And then I'll look at everybody else that haven't gotten better. Mm. You know, like they do lose Critter, they do lose a couple of people, but like other clubs gain a little bit, but they don't they don't lose that much. None of the top teams that were at the top last year gained anyone of real significance, no. except for probably a team that was a high quality caliber that didn't perform, mm. which was Jack Whiten to yeah. the Rabbitohs. And look at Brisbane, you know, you lose Flegler, he's an Australian Farmworth. player now, and Farmworth, was, they're both Dalian players, you know what I mean? Like Farmworth's a Dalian player. Flegler got an Australian jersey by the end of the year. Yep. Um, but Luai deserves this. I think he can walk away from Penrith with his like pride intact. They won't boo him or anything like that. He's done it the right way. He's given Penrith every opportunity to come to the party. They just couldn't. They couldn't. They just couldn't. Financially, they, they couldn't. And they would have been spewing that they losing him. He's a massive part of that whole culture and the club that they've built there. He's a big part of it. And, you know, it's, 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 it's a shame. But this is what happens with the salary cap. Yep. You know, they've lost Critter, they've lost Kicker, they've lost Burton, they've lost, you know, like, they're going to lose Luai. This is what happens. But, um, so the names, so these, these are the names. I'll go through the names that they've lost from this, and there's some fucking decent names in here. So up the top's Jermaine Hopgood. Then it's, I think, I think that's Brent Naden. Then they've got Kurt Capewell. Shit. They've got Spencer Lenu. He'll be leaving in 25 as well. Oh, no, he's there now, 2024. Mm. Matty Burton. Stephen Crichton's gone. Viliami Kikau's gone. Momorowski's gone. Tyrone May's over in the Super League. Um, oh, what's his name? Staines is at the Tigers with Uppy Carousel. And now mm. Jerome's left. So yeah. a couple of good buys. And they, they're still favourites for 2024. they're still favourites. So crazy. that just says that says something. They're, they're ridiculous players, what you just mentioned. There. So, so are they still losers in this deal? Or is it just is it going to affect them? Do so. you think it's going to affect them? I don't, think it, I don't think it affects them. Yeah. I think they just keep going on like the juggernaut that they are. West Tigers get it. Get a gem there. Big winner? He's, yeah. Well, he's going to be 25, 26 there, still in his prime, and one, and fully in control as a man as a, and responsible for that whole team and probably wants that responsibility. Mm. Three years ago, probably doesn't want it. Now, fucking four premierships and, you know, like big runs into the semifinal, played Origin, played in Samoa. Mm. I can take this club and go that way and yeah. win a premiership. That's his, that's his goal. I love the challenge of it. I, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you who's a big winner if this goes the right way. Jerome's legacy. So let, let me throw a couple of compar- well, not comparisons. Um, something that could happen 
If he'd stayed yeah. at the Penrith Panthers, right, he re-signs, he, he stays for another three years, there's a good chance that they're favourites for all three years. Now, whether they win the comp or not, we've got a good Broncos team coming through. Who knows? Could, two years is a long time in rugby league. Another mm. team can emerge like some of these young players. But they'd be thereabouts, so they'd be yeah. favourites. I, I honestly believe he's already won three now. If Jerome won five premierships at the Panthers... His legacy and the way that people viewed him still wouldn't be as great as if he goes into 2025 and the Tigers make the eight <laughs> in their first year. So just say the Tigers don't yeah. make the eight this year. They've got two spoons. They're still figuring out these young players. If he goes in 2025 and the Tigers make the eight, I think people will view that as more of an accomplishment. As yeah. funny as that sounds, I could be wrong. There could be people that big running disagree in the semis. with that. I, I think... I think it's he's picked. He's probably looked at some. He would have had some other offers apart from the West Tigers as well. He's picked that club where it's like, can this? Can we possibly win a competition with this group of players? Mm. You know, like you look at the Tigers. Look at the catchment that they have. Look yep. at the juniors that keep coming through, but they keep losing them because they're probably going. Ah, oh, we just you know we, we're no hope. Here. I'm going to go to another team. There's no. They haven't had that guy there. Yeah. To like, we don't have that. Luke Brooks has always been such maligned that no one would ever sign with the the. The Tigers and go, ah, oh, we've got it. Because he's yeah. their star player, right? Yeah, he's, he's been, been their, their star player. He's a marquee player for the last four or five now, years. Now, can Jerome attract players for the Tigers? Yeah. Do you think and he's I think that? he can. He can. Because yeah. you want to play with him. Um, you know, f- five-year deal there. He, like, Imagine if they win a comp in five years. Mm. Who's who's saying that they can't? Have a look at that forward pack. It's still a good forward pack. Yeah, they just really underachieved in 23. You know, they didn't. They just they, they've got, they would have sat this time last year and went, we're a top eight team. Look at the roster. Mm. They just need career best from some of those players. Career best years from some of those younger kids. Bit Breakout like other, years. The Warriors, the resurgence that the Warriors Yes. Had. So you know, like, have a look at that start in 13. You had six or seven win, be in the Dally M finalists. Yep. Like, that's that's what you need. You need about six or seven positions where you're top three. Yeah. That's what you need to yeah. make the eights. To make the eight. And the younger players, the dream bullers of the world, and, they need to yeah. kick on and, and, and make sure they double down on their yeah. rookie year as well. So, yeah. Um, Winners there. It's not, I mean, it's not, you know, Penrith's probably the loser in it. I think Penrith's you know, the loser. They, they, they're spewing, they're just going, ah, but then they're like, all right, we'll just get clear to do everything. Uh, the only reason I've got Panthers as a loser specifically with this one is because in years past, whether it's Jack Cogger, who's gone to the Knights, uh, Sean O'Sullivan, who was sort of their backup, there's probably going to be some young kid that emerges out there that makes me look stupid. But at the moment, Dane Laurie is probably their versatile six next year. Because even with... Remember Jamin Salmon yeah. used to play a bit of six for him as well? Um, Tyrone Peachy plays a little bit of six if needed. And when but, you said that, I think someone is probably going to come through and make yeah. you look silly. Because no. they would not be losing him just for like a Dane Laurie and a Peach to come through. There's got to be There'd someone be someone in around. Jersey yeah. flag who's like 18, 19... Fucking, they're just going, he's the next dude. He's the guy. He's that dude. He can help Cleary. Cleary be in his bloody eighth or ninth year. Whoever that young kid is, he's a winner. Yeah. He's, <laughs> he's, winner. The, he's the winner. He doesn't even know it. Yeah. Oh, I think he maybe he does know. Maybe he does. He just signed a five-year deal himself. <laughs> um, the other big one, and we're going to the middle uh, of, of the forward pack. The Cronulla Sharks have beaten a number of rival teams, and they signed Adam Fanua Blake. Uh, the 28-year-old has signed a four-year deal. Um it doesn't, have, that it doesn't have the uh, the money that he's on there, but apparently he knocked back 4.5 from the Dragons. So I'm not too sure if he got that at the Sharks or it's in that ballpark. I'd imagine it would have. Over a mil he would have got, wouldn't he? he? Well, he was on a mil at the Warriors. Sure. Uh, yeah, he was going to a mil this year. So he had two more years left up and he was progressing to a mil. Well, he must have got more than that. 1.2, I think. Well, he's... Uh, Here's, I'll, I'll bring up this point as well, and this is what I was alluding to with the uh, Ronald Volkman. So Michael Shamus did a podcast. I sort of seen this just before um, the back end of last year. And I think this is a good point. I want to know if you agree with me on this. He brought up a point, and he wasn't necessarily saying Adam Fanoa Blake is going for this, is, is using this loophole, but if a player leaves for compassionate grounds, that they shouldn't be extended by the new club or given any more money on top of what their contract would have been. So if legitimately you go into a, a different club for whatever reasons, family issues, um, his, his family struggling to live in New Zealand, they want to move back to Sydney to be close to the family, sweet. 
you train, if a team is willing to take you on for that contract, you transfer that contract or there's some form of compensation. Like, I feel sorry for the Warriors now. This is two years in a row that it's happened a little bit earlier, but they lose Reese Walsh, who looked like a, a generational yeah. talent or looked like a player yeah, yeah. of real um, promise. And Adam was there easily, the, if not arguably, the best front row in the game last year. Now, he's going to stay for one more year, but this is two years, over a three-year span, that they're going to lose yeah, top three, top player, three player, player in their position. So there needs to be some sort of compensation. There needs to be compensation. It's not the, they're never, it's a, it's not the money thing. If you go to another, if you leave a club and you have a club's willing to pay you three or four hundred thousand more, yeah, you're there's, taking it. There's got to be some sort but of. But the compensation, swap. the player yeah. swap, is important. I think yeah. it's like I think the NBA do it, and other players you get these picks and these up and coming players, all that kind of stuff. That should have happened. Is it unfair to the players that are at clubs? Like imagine if you're a Cronulla Sharks, you sign on to the Cronulla Sharks, they go, hey, they come and tap on a few of these younger players, maybe mid tier players like myself. Mm. We're gonna lose. We're getting Adam. Who wants to go over the Warriors? How do you? How do you? How do you? How do you start those conversations mm. that haven't been ingrained into our league before? Yeah, it's gonna to have to start happening mm. because this is a business right now, and you just got to look at it like that. And you need those talks from someone. Yeah. So maybe it's a business. Like we're getting for Newell Boat. We need to move some players on. This is what's gonna happen. Yeah. Some sharks, young kids are gonna to get told we have to go to another club. So if because so, of the cap. So if Craig Fitzgibbon comes up to like just for an example, this guy's played off the bench for the last couple of years. He comes up to Jack Williams and goes, Jack, currently you're behind our starting back rowers, mm. Nicora, um, Teague Wilton, who was starting over Wade Graham at the end of the year, and Dale Finucan and McInnes are my starting rotation for my locks. You're going to play 30 to, to 40 minutes. You're on this sort of cash. Would you like to go to the Warriors yeah. for to, to get an opportunity to start in the middle? Whatever it may that's be. That's the conversation. Maybe they move Tiger Harris. Pass. Do it's you think big... those conversations have to start happening? Yeah. Because I feel sorry for the Warriors now. I think they are happening. I think they are. Well, how, how come the Warriors never got... They didn't get any conversation from I mean, when, when that does happen, like yeah. the, there'll be players moved on, but, you mm. just, but it doesn't get moved to that club. Mm. You just get moved out. And you just and your manager finds you another club, but it should be that it should be a direct swap with the player coming here and me giving you compensation. I think it should be that. Yeah. Okay. okay. But I think I think the com- the conversations would be happening right now. When I know there's players who come into other clubs, the coach has to talk to those young kids, going, "Well, you can't. We've got to take you out of the top thirty. This and that. Push you back. Go or go find another club." Mm. Those talks happen. Yeah. But I think it should be more with aligned with the club that you're getting the big dog from. Yeah. And we're going to give you like two younger kids and another, you know, one of our best flag players. Yeah. And do you, th- do you think there's got to be some um, cap? Uh, so just say if Adam Exemptions. Will, and, yeah, exemptions. Yeah. Because, again, this has got to go both ways though. So this yeah. is why I think what happened to Ronald Volkman's fucked up. So mm. if I agree with this take that a player who's a star player, if he goes to another team, there's got to be some sort of compensation or some cap um, requirements yeah. to... Yep to be filled for it. But also, if you have a kid like Ronald Volkman who's now not a part of your plans, but two years ago you signed him from the Roosters to be the guy, and he leaves and goes to the Dragons... Yeah, shoe on the other foot, it doesn't fit right, does exactly it? Exactly right. You know what I mean? So it does work both ways. So most of these clubs are having a bit of a whinge now. So hey, it works the other way when you've got the kid who's in the 28th spot getting tapped on the shoulder, telling him, tell him that he's not good enough. Go to the Dragons, go to another got plate. a bad shoulder. Yeah, you know what I mean? So this is, why, this is how I look at it, because a lot of my mates are in this position... Guys that got moved out of clubs and asked to go somewhere else because of this and that and salary caps and not playing good enough. Mm. But when the big dog comes up, he can do what he wants. Yeah. So I've seen I've seen it and I've watched it happen too many times for me to even care about that and even have a have a take on it. Oh, the news compensation here and there, like fuck, it works both ways. Come on. Exactly. So that's why I agree with Shamus's point. I like what he said. You shouldn't if you leave for compassionate grounds. You don't get any more money or get to extend until at least you have those conversations mm. once you're there in the building and the season's going. Yeah. But if a player like Ronald Volkman goes yeah. to the Dragons and, the, and they look at their roster and they go, hey, Shawnee had career year. He's probably going to finish off. He's mm. our half now. Luke Metcalf, Tamari Martin, and Chanel Harris DeVita are fighting for that sixth position. Where does Ronald Volkman Yeah, you don't care about Ronnie Volkman, do you? He's probably going to play cup. All right. You want to get rid of him? That 200 stays in your cap. He still gets that. He might get a little bit extra money to go to the Dragons or it might be on a, a training trial deal. These are the con- this is the context that things need to be explained yep. instead of little takes on Channel 9 and all yep. this other shit. Yeah, it sounds good. Oh, you should be doing this and getting the compensation. 
fuck off. Yeah. It works both ways because we've been in the game and we see it happen to these other kids. And I'm glad, not glad, but like it's been exposed what's happening to Ronnie Volkman. It's good to have examples. It's good to have examples. Sides. You can go, oh, Fanul Blake, oh, emotional ground. Shut up, mate. Because it fans, works this way as well. Warriors fans would be really upset with Fanul Blake and Walsh going. But they yeah. also probably look at a kid. I remember a couple of years ago, Warriors fans were excited about Ronald Volkman. Now they think they're stuck. Oh, so the yeah. fans also, fans get involved in this too, right? They don't, they forget about the other yes. side. So they, they look at it and go, why are we losing out for Noah Blake? Fuck, he was the best front row. Yeah. And they go, yeah, Ronald can go. Yeah. Like, don't worry about him. Don't Volkman worry about him. Yeah. We're good. We're good in that yeah. position. Nah, nah. It's yeah. got to go both ways. Yeah. It's got to go both ways. I'm glad you explained it like that. Um, all right, the North Queensland Cowboys, this is big news as well. We're talking about halves. We talked about some of the big names before we finish up. North Queensland mm. Cowboys have signed Tommy Dearden to a five-year contract. We we'll see him to 2029, and he will finish that contract at 28. Still Fuck! Right. You're another max deal. Winners are losers. Tommy Dearden. He's winner, winner, winner up there. Winner, winner. What do you get? Uh, mil? Mil? I think a mil. It doesn't... It wasn't reported for some reason. Who deserves it? Who it deserves it? I'd say it'd be a mil. Uh, or That's the market. That's the market. It'd be worth a mil. It might be maybe 800 early by 1.2 by the yeah. end of his contract. future uh, rep player, that kid. So there's also... this Australian is, player. He's already playing for Queensland. So when we start talking about winners and losers, um, again, big losers are teams like the Dragons and I think the Tigers would have been going for him before the Jerome mm. Lyon news or trying to figure out if they were going to get Jerome Lyon. But... Um, this is an interesting quote. Today's announcement finalises what we believe is a solid foundation for our club to build around with Tom, Scotty Drinkwater, and Reese Robson all locked into long-term deals. Yeah, that's, that's a pretty good call. And that was from the CEO for... Who's their CEO now? It's an ex-player. Michael Luck, maybe? Is it Lucky the I think, CEO? I think it's Michael Luck. Yeah, I could be wrong. Someone will correct us. I know he's the involved in, the, in that side I of things. I think it might be Michael Luck. So... Um, I think a loser long term, and not saying he is a loser, but Chad Townsend's probably going to be moved on at the end of the year. He yeah. come up and did a great job at sort of rebuilding it, but I dare mm. say now he's going to have to have a ridiculous year this year for him to get. Or he's going to have to. He's going to be taking less money yeah. to stay if he's going to stay. He's going to have to He'll stay on a club friendly deal. He's thirty-four. Will yeah. he be this year? Him, Ches, and Shawnee Johnson all sort of come through. Adam Reynolds, they all come in, in, in a two-year period. You think about some of the class. Um, you know, we always go NFL yeah. drafts, look at the drafts. I think 2010 and 11 yeah. had Shawnee Johnson, Daly Cherry Evans, Chad Townsend, and Adam Reynolds all playing at a high level. Yeah, still. wow. They were Crazy, all, eh? all had great careers as well. Chad's had a great career. You know, he's um, needs a ridiculous year this year for them to even think about it. Because he's the future seven now, right? With that money? Yeah. He goes to seven? He's a runner, but isn't he? If they can just... I'm sure they have someone coming through the system again. Yep. Well, up they there. brought. They got a great. They got a great little um, catchment up there. They've always got some good players coming through. They brought Mudders Clifford back. Jake Clifford's come back. <laughs> he's no. come back. Oh, let's see. Yeah, yeah. He's at Newcastle for a bit. He's a North Queensland junior. I reckon. My, some of those kids can come back. Like, I yeah. think it's the. There's the blueprint there. They get thrown into the deep end so much. He's a they player too. Yeah, he's, <laughs> man, he was on there. I know, he was playing schoolboys and everything. He was playing schoolboys. My first of the year. So he's like. Oh no, I can't yeah. stop laughing. Mm. Um, so he's come through the system. He was that next man up. Yeah. He got rushed in too quick. And then he gets fucking hammered by the media. They goes overseas, to... comes back and kills again. Yeah. I hope I hope these young kids do that. Mm. Right? You sometimes you just not you get thrown in too early, mate. In the wrong system, team struggling all the time, and then like you just you're the product of it, and then you get fucking hammered by everyone because you're the main dude. Think about so the two clubs that he played at as a seven or six, mm. depending on was replacing Thurston, mm. and then he had to go down to Newcastle, and there was a guy called Andrew Johns that played in the seven as well. No pressure. No pressure. Yeah, so, so that's, they're the cards he got dealt. So yeah. hopefully he can come back in. He's probably only 24, 25 years old. Yeah. And he can like... He's a big winner for me, by the way, Jack yeah. Clifford. I think I think they've signed Dearden for the long-term money. Mm. I think this will probably be Chad's last year there. I think he'll go on and he could go to a club like the Dragons yeah. or somewhere else where they need a veteran half. Clifford could presence. do a job at, se uh, at six. seven. At I, seven. I and then just Clifford leave Dearden at six. Okay. I like Dearden coming right. back and running the ball, man. He's a runner. He's so strong. Yep. Um, yeah, and then just losers to these teams that have sort of been looking for that for that half. Hard to get, eh? Hey? Have a look now. Look at the market. Front rowers. If you're, the best, if you're a top five front rower, mil plus. Yep. If you're a top ten half, mil. If you're up in the top five in the halves, 1.23, easy. 
All right, I've got three names for you. So apparently, Bradman Best is very close to extending with the Knights. It's reported a three-year extension for 700000 Apparently, Ezra Mann is all but close to securing a $3 million contract for three years. Wow. And awesome. Joey Manu has had approaches from the rugby union. New Zealand rugby union? I don't know. It's not clarified. No, I think it's. I think it's the Wallabies. It's I think it's the fucking Wallabies. Come on. I think it would be uh, one point five million per season from the fifteen million <laughs> code. So those are the last three big ones. Um, do you think? What do you think ha- happens with these three players? Do you think Ezra Mam and, and Brad? Ezra Mam stay, I think, because they're young yep. and they want to win. Ezra Mam will be thinking, you know, we left the premiership on the, we left it on the field. Um, I think Bradman Best is a Newcastle boy, means he's from Singleton, I think. So he just wants to play for the Knights. And they're young enough. I think it's Central Coast. Is that Central Coast, is it? I thought he was Singo boy. You're probably right. Um, So they want to, you know, three year deals. It'll be 25, 26 when they come on. Mm. That's nothing. They're still in their prime. So they're going to stay there. Um, Yeah, I I think they're great players. Bradman Best, unlucky not to play representative at the end of the year. Joe Mine is interesting at the Roosters. What's he, going to happen there? He's going to have to stay for a, he, he he's going to have to stay for a club friendly deal because. I'm but is the Roosters remember? I want to look, I want to look at Joseph Murray. Let me quickly get this up, Joey. How old's Joey? Twenty yeah, five. That's what I'm looking at. No, he'd be 26, 27, I reckon. Joseph Murray's twenty seven and two hundred days. Twenty eight this year. Twenty eight this year. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's interesting. Year, that's yeah. interesting. If I'm Joey Murray, how much Manu, more can he do in the game? I'm cashing out, man. How much more can he do? He can't do that much. He's won premierships. He's won, well, the, golden, I he's he's won got... the golden boot. He's won everything. Yep. He's played for New Zealand. <laughs> he just finished playing for New Zealand. Just beat his show 30 nil. Like, he has to cash out, right? I wouldn't, be, ma- I wouldn't be mad at him. Yeah. I would not be mad at him yeah. or just even thinking, oh, shit, why'd he go? Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised either. He, he can't sign for a club. It ain't going to be, opinion. sorry, it ain't going to be for the ARU. It's no. for the All Blacks. Yeah. It's the only thing he'd think. And then he'd be thinking, well, would I go over there and make a massive difference? Would he, would he be trying to win a World Cup? That's probably going to be his goals. Does he want to prolong his career? You know, He's too good he's of a player to be under not being paid more than a million dollars. I think he'd get that from the Roosters. Do you think so? Okay. If he gets that, then he probably stays. Mm. But I I reckon, I, if I was a club like the Dragons, I've said this before, I'd pay 1.5 in a heartbeat for him and play him fullback. Yes. Yeah, he would. But does he? Yeah. There's a lot of, lot of little variables in this deal because he's 28, right? Yeah. 28 this year. Is he past his prime or is he in his prime? He's in his prime. He's in his prime, yeah. right? And does he want to does he want to play fullback? These are conversations obviously the Roosters would know, not us. Yeah. Does he want to play fullback? Maybe not. Because you're doing 15 to 20k a game. I think he would. I, yeah, I know. But like, yeah. does he get more money? I think he's he's box office anyway. Yeah. He could get as much money playing right side, center, left center, wing, whatever, and be that dude. Mm. The same as fullback. Mm. And just say he signs a four, four year deal. Maybe the back, the back two he plays fullback. Yeah. You know, like, or maybe, or maybe he's out, he'd be out of his prime by then. He'd be 30. I'm Does he want to go to the fullback then? I'm looking how old Teddy is. Let's look up. Teddy's 31. Is he? Oh, I just made that up. <laughs> <laughs> I think he is. All right, let's have a look. Teddy is 31 and seven <laughs> days. He's still 31. Well done. Damn it. So he'll be 31 all year. Um, you're right. So if just say if Joey extends, just say he extends to four three years. or four years, the first couple of years you're going to play centres. Teddy's contract will probably be up at least by that It'd point. Be 33. And, then, and then that's a tough decision for the club to make, and he probably plays fullback. But then at that point he's thirty. Yeah. No, that's Martin. what I'm saying. Does he go? Does he go then, or does he go now? He's, if he thinks he's in his prime now, and he thinks he can be the best player in the world for the next three to four years, yeah. I'm grabbing him if I'm a if I'm the Dragons or yeah. someone like that. Yeah. Even Bulldogs, you know, you're in that position where you're like, that is the dude. He's yeah. a top five player in the world. Yeah. If he plays in fullback. Three, in two positions. If he plays fullback, he's consistently renowned as a top player. Because he plays centers, I think there's games that he goes in and out of just because of the nature because, of the because game. Of, exactly. And the position. That he doesn't get to showcase his skills right as much. Right side as center. He no one can throw those darts like that mm. all the time. That is very interesting. Mm. Uh, as I said, I don't. I'd love to know if he wants to play fullback, and he's fucking because the media say that he should play fullback. Maybe you don't want to play fucking fullback. I play, I play fullback when Teddy's out. 
I'm very happy at right side centre, shaking and baking everybody. You know, he gets to flick pass. You can't do that shit at uh, fullback. Yeah. He's yeah. got to be fucking running 15 to 20k a game, all this kind of stuff, directing traffic. Whereas Senna, I think he likes that shake and bake on short sides and showcasing his skills. He's always been a club first player. For Like, if you think yeah. he's had this talent available, they've moved him to six, they've moved him to centres. He's played fullback and run 300 metres and probably been the best player in the comp for yeah. that week. And that's and what everyone sees, but they and see he, those and, names. and he never complains. Like, you never see him complain. He looks like he's happy. So, we could be wrong. We could just be throwing people shit out wa- there. So people it's... want him to play fullback because we see those 300 yeah. metres. And he just... More times he's got the ball, something happens. Yeah. So if he's got the ball 25 times a game, live all that six or seven times is going to be some sort of line break. It's going to be a little flick pass. It's going to be like he's going to make the right play. Mm. You know. So that's what I mean. Like when he gets the, when he gets those opportunities at right side center, that happens again. But yeah. they, he just needs to happen more. They were just out of sync last year. Yeah, they will bounce back. Big bounce back. Be, you know, if yeah. he gets early I'm ball, he gets early ball. He's still that he's still that prime time center. As we break down the teams, I've got a few teams ready for a bounce back. And although they made the finals, I can see them going a little bit better this year. Yeah. All right. Um, with all that considered, I was looking through these players and, and, and what I really started thinking about was positional value if I was running a club. So my priority, I'll go through my priorities mm. and see if you agree. I think you were yeah. pretty much on board with this um, at the moment. Priority one for me is three positions, seven, six, and one. So I want to... I want to get a seven, six, and one. I want to get an elite player mm. at, that, at those positions. I'm not too fussed either way. So, like, what I mean by that is, if I get a Cam Munster, for instance, at six, they're lucky, they're blessed that they've got Harry Grant and, and Jerome Hughes in the team. But just say, if money had signed at the the Dolphins, for instance, I'd be quite happy to have a guy, Sean O'Sullivan. Uh, uh, yeah a game manager sort of play with him, knowing that you got that X factor. Ideally, if you can get two guns, you get two guns. But um, if I've got a Nathan Cleary, you can give me a Tyson Gamble to play six with him. Yep. He's going to be more of a ball runner, an energy guy, a bit like a, a lesser version of what Jerome Luai has been at uh, the Panthers yep. for, for Nathan Cleary. So, And then again, with in this day and age, the, what the... The fullback position has done, in particular, like Kalen Pongers and Reese Walsh's, right? So, seven, six, or one, they're my priority. And then I work around them with mm. the other two positions, right? So, if I get a gun, seven, six, or one, that's my priority. My second priority, and then I can build um, the salary cap around them mm-hmm. in the other positions if need be. My second priority, this is jump. This used to be different. Front rowers now. I want a fucking gun front rower. And then I'd even pay for a really good number two front rowers. Yeah. My priority three is a nine and 13. Front rowers are jump men because yeah, I don't think you can't get momentum. And I'll give my prime example is Isaiah Yo looks so much better playing with Leota. Fisher Lower, mm. Fisher Harris and Liotta than he does playing Origin and Australia with still quality front rowers. Payne Haas, Tino. Payne Haas, just whatever that combination and that go forward that those front rowers provide, and you look at what Adam Fennell Blake, every right off the top four teams from last year Penrith Panthers, Fisher Harris, Liotta. Um, Broncos, Payne Haas, Flegler. Uh, Warriors, um, Mitchie Blake. Barnett, Fennell Blake. And the, who was the last top four team? Oh, uh, Melbourne Storm, Christian Welsh, Nelson Asafa Solomona, and Tui Kamakamitha. Mm. So. All four of those teams, Common have got, denominator. they've got elite front rowers. Yeah. So that would be my priority too. I want, a, I'd pay top money. I'd pay close to a mil, like some of these, you know, Tinos and Adams and all these again, pains. And I'd even pay close to like six, seven fifty for my number two, whether that's Liotta, whether that's a Spencer Lenu, whether that's a Lindsay Collins, whatever mm. it may be. Priority three now, they've shifted. They used to be my priority two. We've got some really good back rowers, but if you look, my again, we go back to my example. Cam Murray didn't have the same go forward that he's had in previous years, and he just wasn't able to have that impact in the game for Souths this year, right? Victor Radley. His front rowers weren't dominated. Their front rowers, at the start of the year, the front rowers weren't dominated for the Roosters, and Victor Radley wasn't playing his best, right? So they're, they're so reliant. But you still want a good 9 and 13 to be able yeah. to play off the back of the go forward once you get the go forward going from the front row. So priority three would be like trying to lock down a a nine of that. Now, look, there are outliers to every example. Like, you get a Harry Grant, you're probably going to want to prioritize him over someone else that a front row or, 
or a, a seven six and one that might not be to his quality, right? So of course, mm. if Harry Grant's on your roster, you, you want to sign him, or if you're a team, you want yeah. to get Harry Grant because he's the elite. You get the cheeses of the world. My next is priority four is wingers. I'm going <laughs> up there, man. I'm going wingers over my last five, which oh, are no, back rowers right. and centers now, <laughs> yeah. because I you reckon feel they're the lowest like, hanging fruit now. Well. You don't right side to, center. You don't have to pay as much for a winger. Mm. I reckon you can get a quality winger for four to five hundred thousand. That's going to give you do your job of. You might not be able to you get a representative winger at that at that cost. You can, mate. You yeah. know, your prime example is is Tom Young and and uh, Greg Marzu last year. Greg mm. Marzu, I guarantee those players would have been on anywhere between three hundred to five hundred thousand. Really you get a winger who can fucking real, read defense. And fucking play twos. So you need then to coach them up. Seven hundred. Yep. So I wouldn't pay seven hundred thousand for a winger though. But give me two wingers. Give me the Marcelo. Oh, would you Pontes. not pay that for Tyre? No. You wouldn't. What's no. your max for Tyre? Tyre. I just wouldn't pay that much for a winger if I had to pay it. I want to get just my pro- for one winger. I would pay that much for him. Well, not if not if I feel like dude. I can get the Marcelo Montoyas of the world. Not if I can get the the Greg Marzus of the world in those positions. Someone who's just Tyre's defense is fucking way better, man. Beautiful. Marju right. and Dom Young have no idea when the ball comes out there. Yeah. He's shutting shit down. He's saving tries. That's what's important because he fucking reads the play. That's, that's what's slept on because his running is so good. In the grand his final. His defensive reads are fucking impeccable. Taruva and De Brian Toto fucking, are two of the most slept yeah. on players in that grand yeah. final for their carries and the defensive yes. reads in Young. And it helps when you've got Critter and you've got the Tungo. Correct. Guns. And it, it all happens from, you can break this down. All the way from the inside to the outside. Yeah, that's why that team is a fucking machine. Toto has those. He can sit back and make a decision because yeah. everyone else is working so hard. Yeah. Sometimes wingers try and make their own decisions to get caught in no man's land and just fucking. Ruin but everything. still, his ability to double D in the yeah, grand bro. final was yeah, huge, yeah, unreal. He checked yeah. Katoni a couple of times. That's why I'd pay him seven hundred. Yeah. And then the last is back rowers and centers. So, mm. um, I just think there are so many just good back rowers and centers now in this game that can yeah. play eighty minutes. That can. Give you 35 to 40 tackles that can give you 10 carries. Mm. You've got to be like, you just got to be fit to be to be playing in those positions. And back row. And back row. All centers. you're doing is kick chases. Yeah. If you're right side back row, like you're probably getting fuck all ball, you're running decoys a lot. Yeah. And all you are is on the kick chase all the time and then plus two or three. And then when they have a wide shift, that's like, why Liam Martin is such a dog. Mm. He just doesn't stop. The Capewells and all the best back rowers, they're 80 minutes non stop. They're just doing those sprints. It's like a 60 meter sprint all the time, plus about three or four efforts. Mm. And then get back, fucking spread the field out. You know what I mean? You can't just like walk back. You gotta, you gotta hold the paint. They're gonna sit on the sidelines because the centers and the wingers are doing their work. Yeah. You know what I mean? So if the ball gets out there, they're ready to push up to hold that winger out. Mighty two so outliers. Mighty two outliers would be guys that can change the game and score points. Kick and there's out. only there's like only kicks. two. Kicks. There's only two for me. Oh, there's three probably. David Fafida, um, kicks. And Hamali Alakwatu. Yeah. I'd probably pay a yeah. little bit more for them because not only are they, they've now proven Game that breakers, they can man. play 80 minute um, performances for big mm. boys, but they can score your tries and they can set up tries. Yeah. And, and you can create havoc in and around them. So, Fafita's I'm, good I'm, for 10. I'm still not yeah. looking, I'd, there's no way I'd be paying any of my back rolls a mil, but I'd be around that conversation. I'd start to have that conversation. Yeah. And um, unfortunately for centers, Centers are probably the least. You just like, need that one dog, that, that gun back rower, yeah. and then the working back rower. Yeah. You know, you need the Ola Kuatu, and then you need the other dude. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you need a fucking gun front rower. The only thing I'd swap is I'd put the front rower that was the number one priority. Oh, would you? That, Over the seven, a seven six and, one. and a one. Yeah, I'm, okay. not putting, I'm not putting two halves. Yeah, gotcha. No, I just want the front row. They're so important because we broke it down. Like, look at the top four teams. Gun seven. So you want gun, two gun front rows? No, just like just one. one? Just yep. one. Yep. Just give me that one Payne Hans or a Tino or Fanul Blake. Yep. And then just give me the other dude. And then you'd go, all right, now I can do a seven and six. Yeah. Yep. Then I'll just have the gun fullback because he's got more of the most, one of the most important jobs because he's dictating everything, right? Defenses and all that kind of stuff, controlling the middle, numbers, everything like that. He's controlling the defense. The seven's got to get you around the park. Yep. You, so you give me like Payne Hans or Tino and you give me Cleary. And then give me fucking Teddy or Ponga or someone like that. Then you can build everything around those guys. Well, then you've got like four priorities. Those are fucking four or five guns. No, I've only got one front row, one seven, and, a, and Teddy. And Teddy. That's those, it. Those Three. are like top top of those players. My example for that would be, right, Jess, so if you get a Munster, 
then you obviously can go a little bit. Maybe you can get a Leota yeah. or, or a Nelson or Sofa Solomona, but then you've got to give away your fullback. You can't get a, a top tier fullback like Teddy. Maybe you've got to go down and go get. I thought a, it was just your priority in a team. Like what yeah, you want yeah, is, but is like, like, but because what you've done, like, dude, you're at three at the top of their position. Uh, Fisher yeah, Harris, that's what I thought it was. Like my Fleury. priorities in the team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but like you, you can't afford to have all of them on those on those cap because they're gonna they're all million dollar players, right? So you got to take. Can a, you afford that? You got to take a bit of a lick, or you're gonna have to go. If you do have that, then you're gonna be like the Penrith Panthers and like go oh, a shitload of good yeah, players. And then that's what happens hope, if I'm GM. And hopefully your culture's <laughs> good enough. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. So you're going top heavy. Yeah, fucking massively. Yeah. Just go. And then just everyone just can fit around them. Yeah. Just, I just need a one, one gun in all those people. Like, give me one decent back row. Give me one decent prop. Yeah. One decent half. Okay. Like, so you don't, nearly you, you like don't, a top three, top three player. You don't care about having a gun seven and six? You can have one good one. seven or six? Like, the, the okay. Examples that you were saying. You're like, you got a gun. Fuck, if you've got Cleary, yeah. you don't need fucking... You don't need Lua Cam Munster, that much. Lua. You don't need Cam Munster. You don't yeah. need that. You can have like a, as you said, like a Cliff and a Sullivan and yeah. stuff like can do, you know, not do their job, but like still have that. They're tra- playing on one side of the field. Yeah. You know, like making, doing all your tackles and everything like that. The seven can just control everything. And the front row, I just need one, like one of the, the, the top dog of them all. Yeah. You need top dog. Even you need a fullback. Top... Even a fullback. I'm not, I'm not going for the cream of the crop, right? You know, like just, who's the best fullback in the world at the moment? Reese Walsh or Ponga? Yeah, him, like Teddy's probably digressed a little bit, mm. you know, but like I could have Teddy there, easily club yeah. level every week. Yeah. He's still going to be oh, one Teddy's of your best gonna, players. Yeah, you know, yeah. KP's still like, he's, he's, I think he's really going to go off off this year. KP. Yeah, like yeah. Dylan Edwards, you know, yeah. he's fucking safe. Yeah. You know, like I think, you're not paying a mil for Dylan Edwards. I think they did. Yeah. I think they did, or oh, A50. I think they got yeah, an yeah, A50. That's fucking good for a yeah. top up, for a top yeah. fullback. You're yeah. talking like, Mill plus easy for a fullback. Well, remember, we said that from the start. Once they'd signed Dylan Edwards, we'd we, yeah, someone that, had to go. That was the writing on the yeah, wall that Drone yeah. was going. That was always, this, this move was always going to happen. You're only going to be able to keep one of them. Yeah, yeah. And then when Clear in, they signed Fish, and it, well, the writing was on the wall a yeah. year ago. Yeah. This time last year. But yeah, I don't know. I think with those teams, yeah, I just need the front rolls. It just showed me last year how important front rolls were. Yeah. And like Leota and Fish, just two absolute beasts. And they had Flegler and Haas. Um, that's the first episode done, though, mate. Mm. Um, on Thursday, we will be breaking down the squads and the teams, the signings and our predicted lineups. I'll go through a predicted lineup and you yeah. can see if you'd have any changes. West Tigers, Dragons, Bulldogs, and Titans. See you on Thursday. All right. See you guys. <laughs> I thought you meant like just my priority. I'm not paying for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like super you, 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 